closes, doesn't it? It says right on it, don't auto adjust auto air glider guider. I'm really happy I uh, didn't read that until after I touched it and moved it with my hand. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just literally waiting on this thing to close because that's going <laughs> to stop making sounds in yeah. a sec. It's just like a it's like a fucking coach's whistle over here. It sounds like the train's rolling into the station. Yeah. Or any sequel of Halloween where there's too many crickets. <laughs> those crickets are going wild. <laughs> They're fucking. It's springtime. <laughs> you guys hear those crickets out there? Those You'll notice uh, immediately that, and I I can't speak for the rest of the world here, but uh, in this section of Canada. Spring lasted for a week, and it rained the whole time. Yup. And now it's fucking summer, guys. It's been almost 30 degrees for a week. Yeah, it's sweaty thigh weather, guys. It's Buckle May. up. Buckle up. Oh, my God. I'm just going to keep pushing buttons until this air conditioner turns off. Yeah, well, it's... I did that in Tim's van recently, my boss's van. Um, the sunshades. Mm. And I have my feet up on the dashboard because we drive for long periods of time and I want to be comfortable as fuck illegally. As you do. As you do. And so I, with my foot, um, I wanted to kick the sun visor out of my way. And I apparently kicked a little too hard with too much force because I left a scratch on the windshield. Oof. And I broke the attachment for the sun visor. Now it's still attached. It's just cracked. Oh my God. So now you have to be incredibly careful. <laughs> And, and I hope you, I hope your insurance covers that. Oh, I don't even know if these did you guys have did, you, did you guys uh, exchange no informations? My, my foot and the windshield and sun visor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it was really one sided because I don't think he they had insurance. Uh, yikes! Yikes! Mm -hmm. All right, guys. And today's sponsor is Foot Insurance. Get insurance uh, exclusively for your feet. You know, some people say that having life insurance as you age is a good idea because it protects your money from being taken by the government when you die. That's a scam. The only insurance you need is for your feet and hands because those are uh, registered weapons. Or a porn star's working tools. Uh, yeah, unfortunate porn stars, though. <laughs> Not the good ones. Oh, uh, ah, uh, dark, darkroastcult.com is the website. It uh, sure we, is. We, don't, we don't have foot insurance. No. But you can listen to this podcast, mm -hmm. and you can also, uh, I don't know, buy coffee and buttons. Buttons? Pins? They're not buttons. I, I feel like I called them buttons, and that's disrespectful. I mean, what's the difference? Well, a button's like a little plastic thing, and it, like, it puts, it puts two holes in your jeans when you put them near your crotch, like a... Remember, you, remember when that was a thing? You know what that attachment is called, though? Is it called a, 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 a dingle? It's called a pin. My word. Yeah. Well, so even the buttons have pins. Well, then that's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. The a button is just a pin with a thing on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we don't sell those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't get can't get right here. Just can't get right. You just well, where's your lumbar support? I'm um, sure that blanket can't be providing much. It doesn't. It doesn't provide much at all. And, uh, and that's why you got to go to darkroastcult.com, because yeah. we've got zero lumbar. And we'll make you forget about your own back pain for at least a brief period of time. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I watched this movie this morning. Yeah. I, I had to rewatch it. Yeah. That's, that's, I put, that's I put a lot of attention and effort into watching it uh, Sunday morning, despite the fact that I was exhausted and hungover. And I like I'd like to think that I've committed the majority of its memory. A lot of my notes this week are like very nitpicky because to be honest, and this is what this is what I wanted to get out of the way right off the bat. Last week I called Gina Davis, who is the actress in this movie, Gina Gershon. And that's a very different person. <laughs> I don't even know who Gina Gershon is. Yeah, you just kind of said that name. I'm like, I recognize that. Name. Yeah, that's probably a that's probably a person. God, it's some dumb beaver from like SCTV or something. Is it? Uh... What's that? What's that curly haired, big nosed woman who married Danny DeVito's name? Uh... I can never remember it for the life of me. Uh... Rita. Rita Perlman. Ah, oh. yeah. for, for some reason in my head, I always go to Elvira Kurt, who who is a lesbian stand-up comedian. That's not even the same thing. <laughs> I uh, I was gonna say Rita Rudner. So okay, I don't know who Rita Rudner is, but I, I, uh, again, I recognize the name. Um, that episode of American Dad where uh, Klaus goes on vacation and he ends up hurting his back. Yeah, and he's stuck watching the hotel TV preview. It's a, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Rita Rudner concert. Okay, they're, they're showing a preview for. 
And for those of you who have no idea what's going on, <laughs> uh, we're just talking about other things and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. That's welcome to the podcast where we just ramble on mm-hmm. incoherently. There are no rules. There, well, I mean... Until one of us has to shit really bad. Yeah, and, and then we generally just rush and end the podcast. Y- yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, well, uh, yeah, uh, well, speaking of the podcast, welcome to it. Also, thank you, Andrew, for the theme song. Yeah. Um, See, I hit it that time. You did, this you did. This is the first time in the history of the podcast where I thanked him first. You just yanked the words correctly right out of my mouth. I, yeah, bro. I had nothing to say other than, uh... That there. motherfucker just posted the picture, of, like a picture of him on like the driver's side of a van for some reason, on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, he did, uh, with, with a with a with a sun hat or uh, yeah, it was, it was like a one piece hat for all you animes. I got news for you, Andrew. You look great. <laughs> oh, so what movie did we do this week? Uh, this week we watched a movie starring Jeff Goldblum Bug and time. Gina and Gina Gershon Davis. Gershon because, Davis. Yeah, when she when she married Gina Gershon, she hyphenated her name to be progressive. That's a lie. I just told. I just told a y- yeah, lie. Yeah, you're just saying names. Yeah, and uh, a guy who I don't know his name, and I haven't seen him in a single movie before or since. You know what? I think uh, I think America got enough of him in this movie. You're talking yeah. about the boss character. Yeah. Oh yeah. The I I had well in enough of that guy. Yeah. So to uh, segue into that, um, in order to, to sum this movie up in two sentences or less. What would you say? Oh, what would I say? Mm-hmm. Uh, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Uh, it would be probably, it's one of the early ones. Uh, just just watch them all. Yeah, okay. I don't know how that's relevant. You, They do the fly on that. They Do work. they? So, <clears throat> and it's, an, it's the episode where Homer goes to like a yard sale that, doc, that the scientist is having, and he's got the two teleporters, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm selling these. And he buys them, and what Homer does is he... Puts one in front of the fridge so he can, like, reach in and grab a beer. <laughs> okay, I have a vague recollection of that part. And then, so Bart goes in with a fly, mm-hmm. and two come out. And one's one's a fly with Bart's head, and one's Bart with a fly's head. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, it's coming there together in my head. So if you've seen that, you gotta you've understand seen this movie. This First of all, that's probably one of the earliest Treehouse of Horrors. It is. Because I don't remember it. Hey, hey, hey. I used to have this DVD of, like... Uh, it was probably like four or five of them. I think we had the same DVD. We probably did. Those are the only ones. Those are the ones I remember best. They did uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey when like they make their house into a future house. Same episode, I think. Is it? If not, it, it it's like, yeah, one of the early ones like okay. that. Okay. Well, for sure. Those, those are the only ones I remember anyway. And I can't. Fuck. I do remember Fly Bart because he had fly eyes. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe it and was a proboscis. Uh, it might have been the same one where Homer goes in behind the bookcase and uh, and he comes like into the three dimensional. Right, and then he he falls down a vortex into live action, and he's the one who's scared. Y- yeah, and everybody's like just kind of looking at him, he's like, oh, oh, oh. if I saw a fully sentient and functioning independently uh, man who appeared to be made out of play doh, I, I I would be upset. Oh, I'd be taking chunks out of him. <laughs> I just start right up, just start punching him until I just get him as many times as I can before I, he eats he me. He looks squishy. Yeah. Maybe I can defeat him. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we watched The Fucking Fly, and my uh, synopsis was um, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, what, what the fuck did I write? Let me just let me just go through four pages of notes to see if I can find it. I, I wanted to add something else to it in my head. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to write it out. And then I fucking did anyway. Anyway, Jeff Goldblum finds out how important it is to sterilize your fucking work environment when doing science experiments, mm. but somehow manages to be not the biggest insect in the movie. <laughs> and when I say that, what I'm saying is Gina Davis's boss in this movie oh my is God. a fucking scum bag from beginning to end. Oh, he's, he doesn't he, take a single day off no, from being he does a scumbag. Not. And also basically a stalker. Yeah, no, he that he's one hundred percent a stalker who should have been charged with real crimes at some point in the movie. Yeah, because um, he commits them. Well, yeah, he breaks and enters. Yeah, he well, does. I guess he doesn't break; he just enters. Yeah, because he has a key that he. We're refuses. gonna get into how pissed yeah, off yeah. I am about this fucking okay, cool. that whole scene yep. because I it happens twice in the movie and I'm pissed both times. Oh, absolutely, still in my head. Okay, all right. Well, <clears throat> yeah, uh, something you need to know about Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, if you um, if you don't know Jeff Goldblum, he's got one gear. Yeah, he does. And it's Dinosaur Scientist. It's, yeah. 
He's every been... movie where he's a scientist, he was the best person to be cast for that role. Oh yeah, yeah. And this this one is no different. He it's it's just younger and more Jeff Goldblumy. Yeah, I That's... really like that we did a movie from the eighties where uh, they don't like hold your hand through the exposition at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week from Beyond, and then or the week before, either way. Uh, the thing is, we did an 80s movie from beyond where they just fucking throw you right into what's happening. And then in this movie, they do the exact same thing, but like more egregiously almost. You just get hit mid-conversation. Yeah, yeah. Between Jeff Goldblum, whose name is Seth Brundle. Brundle. Not to be mistaken with Grundle. Yeah, no. That would be a very bad mistake to make. Yeah, those those are two different objects. I guarantee you, you got made fun of a lot in high school for having that last name. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so absolutely. it's Grundle, and uh, Gina Davis's name is Veronica. So it oh, just, is it? Yep. Okay, I never, I never once heard mm-hmm. her name the entire movie. Yeah. So I and just her call boss's her... name is Stathis. I call her journalist and boss. Okay, well okay. that's fine. A uh, reporter maybe. Stathis is like the the most white neurobiologist name ever. And all he is is a, a man who runs a journalist company in a shady way. It it sounds it just his name sounds like a dis, like an infection. Yeah, I got the Stathis. Yeah, well, don't come near me. Yeah, <laughs> that that shit's airborne. I'm out of here. So it's fucking yeah, it's fucking <laughs> Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis, Seth and Veronica at a uh, some kind of uh uh, uh CES. For, yeah, for scientists, it's like the 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 very earliest like convention for like yeah. scientists who want to show off their their mad scientist inventions. And it takes all of thirty seconds during this conversation for uh, Jeff Goldblum to invite her back to his house. Come he, back, I'll show you. We'll have cappuccinos. And she's she's like, oh, you don't get out much. And he and he says, you can tell. <laughs> Which is the best answer, and I'm going to start... If yeah. anybody ever says, like, oh, you can tell? Yeah. Shit. You sh- <laughs> now I'm horrified. <laughs> Great. What, is my dick hanging out of my pants? Mm. Mm. Uh, the first thing I notice about Jeff Goldblum at this age uh, is that he's the most ripped scientist to ever exist. Oh, yeah. And he also has the most luxurious hair of any scientist ever. And you know what? I don't think he blinks once. Uh, he definitely blinks sparingly. There's a lot more blinking once he starts becoming a fly. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got to wet those eyes. They're oh, huge. Oh, absolutely. And uh, also he smiles like a rabbit. I'll give you that. It's all upper teeth. Yeah. Yeah. The more you say it, the I can just picture it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for some reason, uh, despite the climate, uh, the, socially. The, the creepiest man in the entire room. Yes. With his wide eyes staring deep into your soul during an entire conversation one-on-one with a vulnerable lady. Yeah. It was like the only lady in the whole place. He still manages to lure her back. Yeah. She has no qualms. And I'll tell you, I wrote down so many um, red flags for you're not going to wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what is just the first thing, dive right in to come to my lab, not to my house. Come to my lab so I can show you something. <clears throat> Ooh. Can you bring it outside? Yeah. Can you bring it outside to the car? Do you have a picture of it, actually? <laughs> um, he fucking loves his cappuccino machine, which is a level of obsession over coffee that I've only seen in uh, people who run uh, coffee companies such as darkrosecult.com. Oh. <clears throat> uh, yeah, even, he doesn't know the brand name of his cappuccino machine. He just knows it's the one that the stores have with the eagle on top. Yeah. So, and he even, he's like, he even brings the eagle up, he shows it. Yeah, it's like, so you care more about the eagle than you do about the cappuccino inside, it's fine. No, no worries, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Um, as they're driving, they start to go into an industrial area. Oh, yeah, it's the kind of area where, like, you double check your GPS. Yeah. Uh, I have <clears throat> told a story on this again about my English teacher in 12th grade who had a friend who went to, I believe, Peru, somewhere in South America anyway, took a taxi, was driven to an industrial area um, into a parking lot that had a bunch of headlights just shining on the car as it pulled up. Uh Uh-oh. And a bunch of people standing outside waiting. He immediately knew what was going on, bailed out of the vehicle, ran home. At one point, though, he had to hop a barbed wire fence, cut his arm, and then hid in what he thought was a pond, but was actually sewer runoff. Oh. 
And then that's how you get the Staphus infection. So, yep. And then he uh, made his way to safety, hopped a plane home immediately because that's what you do when you have an experience like that. Yep. I need to get back into my own house and regroup yeah. and try to find some semblance of goodness within the species <laughs> that I'm a part of. <laughs> On the airplane, uh, the wound started to smell real bad. They made a pit stop at a hospital. He goes, uh, the doctor goes, that's the most effective thing I've ever seen. Oh, no. So he had, like, sepsis at that point. He had to go, like, over, like, a ton of treatments and shit. All good. I'm never going to South... You know, I'm sure Brazil is beautiful. Oh. Oh, well, they've got, you know, Christ the the Redeemer there. You got those beaches, thongs on the beach. If in order to get to the the thongy beach and the Jesus statue that overlooks it Mm -hmm. uh, blasphemingly, I have to swat off, like, mosquitoes, human traffickers... I'd rather not visit the place. That's all I'm saying. Okay. 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 I'm sure Brazilians yeah. are great people. Uh, you live in a hellhole. Whoops. You know what? Just give me VR Brazil. Yeah. I'll, I'll take VR Brazil. Make, give me Cristo just on a headset. Yeah. Uh, and as long as I can take it off once I get abducted and that's that, I'm, it's cool. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, and again, vulnerable young woman in the car with somebody who's taking you back to their lab. Yeah. And then you start to see like nuclear power plants and shit. Okay, well maybe this isn't the ride I'm trying to take right now. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, that, where, where are you leading me? And she she makes like one comment about being a little bit uncomfortable, but then it's like, "Eh, never mind, I'm good." Y- yeah, she's got a she's got a couple qualms that are easily solved, I've noticed. Um this <clears throat> lab is in a building that I know has one of those freight elevators with the huge gate that comes down. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And, like, slams loudly. Oh, for sure. With the, if I, the, like, staircase that they climb up, for sure yeah. has it. If I see that shit by, uh, the first thing that Jeff Goldblum does upon getting this woman into the lab in which he lives is sit down and play the piano like the Phantom with a fucking opera. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I just met you tonight. I'm just going to start playing the piano now, though. Menacingly. Yeah. And, like, well, but still. Yeah. And then uh, she's like, you know what? I'm out. Mm-hmm. And, and then he says probably the biggest red flaggiest thing is, <laughs> I can't let you go. You've already seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Like, you can't leave alive. Yeah, You've already yeah, seen yeah. it. Like, yeah. I, like he just had his penis out at the piano. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Then, uh, so I just wrote down. This is the seventh point down the page. The rest were that mm-hmm. uh, rapist number one. <laughs> oh. Because good god. Uh, so he's got these two telepods that he called. They're not. This is the only movie ever piece of media where they're called telepods. For fuck's sake. I've never heard that before since. No, no, but I mean, like, that's a good name for it. It is. It's it's shorter than teleporter, so you're just being, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, feasible with your words there. Uh, he, it's, he's he's trying to convince her that he can he can transport matter, uh, inanimate matter. This is a very important note. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, from one pod to another, and ask her for a, a piece of uh, a, a, a uniquely personal item. And uh, Veronica's first instinct is, oh, well, my pantyhose. Mm, mm. I'll just bare my legs. Ooh. Now, I don't know anybody, and it's not like I talk to women about their pantyhose, but who considers pantyhose to be a personal item, a uniquely personal item? Like, you're the only one dressing nicely for a dinner party. At this point, old ladies. Old ladies. Old their ladies pantyhose are, is so fucking important. They're the only people who would wear them at this point. So old ladies. Yeah, everybody else has gone to fishnets. Uh, have they ever? <laughs> <laughs> um, seen Revi- revival, Matt. Get on board. If you haven't seen the movie, yeah, I will. Oh, I'm sure I skipped over some deets here. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm just. I just want to note that the in- this his lab is also his apartment, mm-hmm. and this whole room looks like the set of Always Sunny. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, green, dirty walls. It just looks like you're walking into to Charlie's apartment right there. But then there's also <laughs> all kinds of science equipment. Here's the thing. It's fucking clean as shit, though. It's immaculate for the first half of the movie. 
No, man, those walls are filthy. The walls, yeah, but there's no clothes on the floor. Okay, the I'll fucking give you bed, that. the couch bed is made. I think it's a couch bed. It, it, it is a couch bed. bed. Yeah, okay, it's definitely a couch bed. And uh, so there's this movie called Final Draft with uh, James Vanderbeek in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you know that name at all? Well. <laughs> Have I watched Dawson's Creek? There it is. I'm glad we're on the same page. The answer is no, but I, I, I did, I did watch. What is it? Uh, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, yeah, he is in that. I, for, I forget that him and Jason Biggs are in that movie. Yeah, they are. And they talk about fucking pies because you can't get in a room with with Jason Biggs without mentioning the fact that he fucked a pie once. Well, you do it once. That's. It's like having a certain color of hair. Yeah, he's not even in those movies anymore. They're just people. Just like, oh, let's go see those pie fucker movies. <laughs> Somebody's gonna either get... that guy. Oh, 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 the pie fucker, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Is, is he even in them? No. Yeah. Is somebody fucking a pie? <laughs> I just want somebody to fuck a pie in this movie. At that, yeah. I don't. If if they're not still fucking pies in American Pie, why are they making them? <laughs> why are you still making Change American the name. pies? Yeah. It's just cream. <laughs> uh, that episode of Family Guy where um. Ron Livingston's parents are on a bus and they're trying to remember their, their own son's yeah. name. Yeah. It would be way easier if you were Jason Biggs' parents. <laughs> uh, he's a famous actor. He fucked a pie in 1998. Oh! I can picture him, but I don't know his name. Yeah, no, it's fine. All you got to remember is his wiener was in a pastry. Mm, mm. And then, yeah, Eugene Levy walked in on it. Yeah. Wasn't Great. he funny in SCTV? I don't know. I never watched it. Second time. I've, I'm <laughs> shocked. That you never watched SCTV. Ah, uh, Kids in the Hall guy over here. Yeah, they they go hand in hand. Mm, one's one's a little more family friendly than the That's other. That's fair enough. Uh, Favorite Kids in the Hall sketch, Dave Foley with the axe. Oh, dude, it's every single one of those is great. And, and it's he's on... like, you know, don't tell anybody I murdered someone with this axe or else I'll tell. Chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. If you haven't seen it, it's Amazon Prime. Uh, it, it's back. It's so back. Watch They're... the old and then watch the new. They are 30 years older. So they look it. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> well, I mean, they're they are thirty years older. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Well, while Jeff is trying to impress this reporter by teleporting her pantyhose, mm. he's like explaining to her all this stuff, and then she goes, "Huh?" <laughs> and like that's gonna be the biggest bummer because he's like hyped yeah. up. He's like, "Yo, I got this machine. It's amazing. Oh my look god. It, look it. Look it." And she's just like. I, I don't get it. I don't I don't understand. Like he's so excited to share this invention that as he described will change the face of humanity as we know it yeah. or something like that. But like he hits her with the science jargon and she's just like, "What?" <laughs> it's like when you go to show somebody like a really funny video and they just don't. They're just yeah. uninterested. It's like, yeah. "Come on." I do, or like a, any movie and you keep looking at them like when the good parts cuz you've seen it before and mm-hmm. they have no reaction. Exactly. It's ex- that's exactly the vibe I got cuz he how big of a bummer would that be if yeah. they just didn't fucking get it? All right, man, just get the other fucking journalist, the one that's actually interested over. You can go. <laughs> I don't care how curly your hair is and how big your lips are. <clears throat> Gina Davis for anybody who hasn't seen her ever, who hasn't seen Beetlejuice or this movie. She's got she's got big pillowy lips. Oh. I uh I didn't take notice. Mm-hmm. I was I was too busy being uh sirened by uh, Jeff Goldblum's yeah. luscious locks. His fucking rock hard abs somehow well it was a different time i want to say this is one of his first movies ever mm. i'm not 100 percent on that but i believe it was very early into his career i it 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 probably is but i'm very far too lazy to go look that up for you because this is 1986 i think it, it is it's late not late 80s but mid 80s for sure i we should have that information but yeah we don't. I, I don't we just I don't say i wrote it somewhere but uh obviously i didn't um and then jurassic park i think was like 92 not yeah maybe maybe 91 92 something like that i don't think it was maybe 93 i don't know okay. i was i was old enough to remember it coming out right so that's a good marker for yeah <laughs> fuck uh yeah so this fucking uh tell this is something that i wanted to bring up which is fucking annoying um he's being all secretive about this thing right Mm -hmm. and uh in order to make it work you have to input commands into a computer a little bit of an oversight you're trying not to uh show people or uh, let people in too deeply into how this thing works all of the commands are voice activated well yeah he whispers them oh he whispers them (laughs) yeah yeah he was he was totally like Initiate teleport command. 
<laughs> and, like, and then he like looks at her and like to make sure she didn't hear it. I was so fucking annoyed because there's a <laughs> keyboard right there. Yeah, there is. Just type them. And then later on he types them with his fat fly fingers. Yeah. Which would be even harder. But that's because the voice no longer was recognized. So but I mean it was the exact same voice. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It's just um, he the, it could only recognize teeth. It was it was teeth recognize recognition. Yeah, because he starts fucking his teeth just start falling out. Uh, just as a teaser of things that come in this podcast, the way that his body deteriorates mm, is so fucking disgusting. Yeah, it is. That I got upset. Well, I mean, there's that's the that's the reaction that that you should have. Yeah. To the things that happen in this movie. Yeah, David Cronenberg really hit the fucking nail on the head with the gross here. Did he ever? This is uh I would say this movie is grosser than From Beyond for me. Minus the S and M dungeon. Mm. That's gross for a different reason. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'll yeah. Just the transformation. Yeah. The whole thing. And I mean, oh, it's all practical effects too. So yeah. you, you get like it oh, it just looks so bad but so good. Was there any CGI? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the full, like the the final product was, but I don't think mm. it was. I was wondering if the fly was, but like the the they have a baboon and it's like clearly, uh, it can see the fly like it's reacting to the fly, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is hilarious. You just have a baboon in a chair and you antagonize it with an insect for like an hour and a half and film it. Yeah, and at no point did that baboon eat the fly. No, you would have. Yeah. That would have solved everything. It would have. Just, and that's also like probably a monkey's first instinct. <laughs> I I can't say monkey because it's, it's corrected in the movie as well. It's not a monkey. It's a baboon. Get your fucking eight yeah. species correct. Yeah. Well, once once it's a baboon, I mean, who cares? Do whatever you want to the baboon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a hierarchy. That's just racism. Oh, yeah. Well, if it's a monkey, you you can't do what, yeah. what happens to... The monkeys are holy and sacred. That's right. Baboons. They're the supreme race of uh, apes. Uh, yeah. Baboons mm. with their red asses <laughs> hanging out like that. I don't think I, I don't bottom think we of saw the, of his red ass. Hole. We saw his red insides. I don't think we saw <laughs> the bottom of the monkey hole. Uh, so before it, we move on from the pantyhose, I want to okay, point out okay. um, this computer that analyzes the uh, data in these inanimate objects in preparation for transporting them mm-hmm. uh, spit out that the pantyhose had zero point zero 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 one percent organic matter in it which means you know there's a pube in those pantyhose <laughs> well how do you take your pantyhose off without losing at least one there's one singular pube in the in those hose and that and now we know that gina davis doesn't shave <laughs> she likes it she likes it to fly free like she's at woodstock in 78 ah uh, jay jay digs deep yeah i sure do he digs deep for his information well it's, it's the fucking computer list of all these things and i wanted to read all of them yeah, because I wanted to I didn't know. Even think, I didn't even think to pause it to look. Uh, he went to all the trouble of like actually breaking it down into very minuscule percentages, like the genetic composition of everything that goes in there. Oh my god, it's insane! And it becomes important later. It does. It does. Uh, uh. So yeah, he teleports these pantyhose, mm. and Gina, she's like, "Oh, what is that? A hologram?" Yeah, not the. Uh, there's a prostitute later on in the movie. That he, uh, in his like frantic need to have appreciation later on, <clears throat> he shows her the teleporter, and she goes, "Are you a magician?" Mm. I would ask that before asking if it's a hologram. <laughs> yeah, every magician does this teleportation bullshit trick. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's I'm... a whole movie with Christian Bale in it called The Prestige. Oh, it's such a good movie. It is. It's a great fucking movie. Oh, my God. I, I'm i pretty sure I've seen... I was, gonna th- uh, <clears throat> I was trying to think of the exact number. Uh, how many times I've seen Chris Angel go from one spot to another? Yeah. Oh, he, that dude's doing it left, right, and center. And That's and, like the number one thing he does. And let's be clear. Those aren't camera cuts. No. No. At all. It, that Well, that would be a lie. Yeah. First of all, if it's, he were to cut the camera, then you would you would be lied to as, as a viewer. It's not at all uh, trickery and production. No, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Um, He's not just a guy. When you see him flying, um, they don't shoot from directly below because he could f- fall at any. It's dangerous. Yeah. He could yeah. Fall any moment. It's for the safety of the camera crew. That's why the Screen Actors Guild exists. Yeah, exactly. It's not because there's something under there lifting him up. Or something over top of him. Um, yeah, holding him in the air. 
like um like because you know airplanes can't hover right there's, no there's no way there's no there's, such there's, thing there's just no device that uh lets you hover in the air Mm-mm. so no uh, it, it's like sharks when you're in the air you have to keep moving or you die yeah absolutely absolutely and uh chris angel magic shark yeah oh he's a that's the best thing he's a great white magician <laughs> he is <laughs> he literally is <laughs> Oh my God! All right, so uh, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. If one pantyhose is in one tube, then the pantyhose are in a different different box there, mm-hmm. and she's like, ah, hologram, and then um, so he's like, nah, it ain't a hologram. Listen, bitch, I dissembled it, I resembled it. Yeah. Uh, and then she's like, well, how did you do that? And then, and then Jeff Goldblum in a wild, just like he he goes off in this this tangent. And he basically describes the movie The Cube <laughs> in, in, in how he's like, I get people to design the parts for me yeah. and I don't tell them what I'm making. Oh, my fucking God. He Nobody does. asks questions because it's inexpensive. Jeff Goldblum made the fucking cube. Guys. Right. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was his first or second. Pro- well, that's first amazing. project because I don't think he's making much. Oh, no. He must have made the cube beforehand. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's just like, yeah, I contract people and nobody knows what I'm making. It's a secret. Can you imagine the red tape and paperwork you have to like work through having just a dozen people make random parts, mm-hmm. random chips and electronics, and all he does is just, uh, <laughs> he calls it teaching a computer. Yeah. You don't fucking teach a computer shit. You type you type letters and numbers into that thing. Yeah. And, and it com- just does it. The computer knows. It's yeah. just waiting for you to know what you want it to do. Yeah. It, if anything, the computer's teaching you what you did wrong. <laughs> it, it literally, it that, that that's what it does in the movie. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it does. We'll, we'll get to that because this computer is a fucking dick bag. It sure this is, This computer dude. makes the worst decisions, but. It, yeah. It just goes with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we, we, we meet the boss after that. Staffus, the misogynistic stalker boss. Oh yeah. The, uh, the, the lead editor of what is it? Particle magazine. Yeah. S- such a good name for a magazine. Oh yeah. I'm where's my, my subscription to particle hasn't come in the mail yet. Oh I, man. What am I going to do without those? Oh, I need my quarterly particle. I'm going to be, I'm going to be 70% of a person. Oh, I need those particles to assimilate. Motherfucker. It's just as bad of a magazine title as Time. Mm. What's that? Well, that's a way to measure how long it takes for you to die. <laughs> Makes me stoked to read about mm. Elon Musk. Mm. Elon Musk is dying. <laughs> that should be every article in Time magazine. <laughs> just like, here's a celebrity. Guess how long they've got left. Yeah. Death T- clock. Only time will tell. Only, yeah. Dun, dun. Subscribe. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll just get sued by Time Magazine, yeah. and then it's we'll be good. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he she, Gina has been recording this whole time. Yeah, which makes her so. First of all, there's this whole the only time that people record shadily and it's inadmissible in court is when you're trying to catch somebody red-handed in a crime. Yeah, not when you're trying to like write a story about a kindly scientist. Yeah, you you generally have to ask permission yeah. um, before you start. Just because you're a reporter, I don't think it gives you the right to just be like, well, this is a new story, I guess. The sad part is it does. Uh, and like, okay, you're going to burn the bridge with uh, the most innovative uh, scientist in like fucking 300 years. He's teleporting things from one place to another. And did you, did you catch what, caught, like why he's he invented this? I, I did, but I forget. He gets motion sickness, so yeah, right, right. He can't yeah. drive. This is this was the whole like he can't solution. Ride in cars, and yeah, shit. for right. motion sickness. I mean, that's excessive. It is. It it very much is. Take a Nadja pill. <laughs> yep, yep. Instead of spending twenty years on this. Yep, G- Gravol maybe. Gravol. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe he's maybe he just he can't have ginger or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he's got a sensitive tum. <laughs> His tum tum. <laughs> but oh yeah, no, just like. Taking yourself apart molecule by molecule and putting it back together in yeah. hopefully the right order, easier than probably a ginger gravol. You can't always have those <laughs> on you. You just can't. Those ginger gravols really hit the spot. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah. Then it's just, I didn't write anything down for this initial um, Veronica and Staffis scene because I was so fucking appalled by the, hey, 
I know that when we were together years ago, it was because I was a teacher and you were a student, thus displaying a, a toxic power dynamic, which makes the relationship extremely controlling and one-sided and abusive. But I still want to get in there. Mm, how about friends with just fucking? Yeah. Is, is, I believe which, he pitches it like 50 times in this movie. Yeah. At one point, she... Um, he, she's going in to do something dangerous, and he's like, "Do I have permission to claim your body after this?" Yeah. Not For only, what? For what? What do you think? Number one. Number two. Not only is she going in to do something dangerous, uh, she is like hysterically upset in his office, sobbing. Yeah. And concerned. Yeah. And that's like, hey, if he dies, can I fuck the shit out of you? <laughs> yeah. Well. Great. <laughs> he doesn't have a single redeeming quality the entire movie. No. I did note that he calls like the teleportation thing a, a nightclub trick, mm -hmm. which that was the first indication that like that somebody knows what magic is. Yeah, in and, this universe. But it also goes to show like how far we've come in nightclubs, because like that used to be a place for magicians to go. Yeah. Now it's loud music and people bumping their groins together. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. I would consider that to be a downgrade. I would. I would. I would rather go to a nightclub if I knew somebody was going to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Yeah, and then I know I was sort of instead of out of their puss. <laughs> well against me yeah and glow sticks in my face i don't even do ecstasy that's just a nuisance you know what i got a headache when those things bust open that stuff that stuff stings the eyes i believe that it does so don't I've never had that happen to me oh man uh grade eight dances man we used to bust those things and just like throw it all over ourselves mm. so we could glow for about three seconds before yeah. it just started burning our flesh. Yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. Before those acidic chemicals started getting into your body. Yeah. I think one kid even drank it once. That's a mistake. Yeah. I went to you, a, you it might was a small die. town. Small town. Yeah. Well, that's the only, those are the only things that happen in small towns, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you give a guy one too many EpiPens and they lift a car. <laughs> that's a true fucking story. That, that's something we tried to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had a, I knew a guy, his name was Rocky, picture mm -hmm. a guy named Rocky and that's what he looked like. Yeah. He's a big guy. And we're like, well, one EpiPen's probably good. Right. I don't know where he got it from, but he had one. Oh, so he didn't even have a bee allergy. He just had an EpiPen. Yeah. He got one from somewhere and, that's and he's like, it's adrenaline. If yeah. I give this to myself, you think, think I could flip this car? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't see why not. <laughs> You're a big guy. And then everybody's like, no, no, no. So we didn't do it. But that would have been a sweet video. Mm, it would have. Also, I, I, where do you just get those? I think he got it from his friend oh my who God. actually had an allergy. So, yeah, that guy he gets too close to peanut butter and he's like, wow, I wish I didn't give that to my friend Rocky. Yeah, boy, I hope Rocky's making some good use out of that. I can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, the boss has been dipping his pen in the company ink. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, it gets worse because at one point she goes home and she hears her shower running and he's just naked in there. Yeah, so that's a big problem for me. Yeah. Uh, you come into your house and there's a guy who you used to be in a relationship with but don't have that good of a relationship with other than being just, like, forced work colleagues because you're trying to do a good job at your dream job. Mm-hmm. And he's in your house. Not only that, in the shower, ass naked. Yep. Just and, let himself in and, and took his clothes off. And then she does nothing? Well, she flushes the toilet. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess at that point, you really just have to drag him out ass naked and wet and throw him into the hallway. Yeah. And then lock the door and then be sure to take the key he has. Well, if he's ass naked and wet, you would hope he's not still having the key on his person. <laughs> That's the only place that you can hide it after you get dumped. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I, 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 like, she... Uh, yeah, the, yeah. And during that scene, right after he comes out of the fucking... Like, he thought that was going to be a good... Uh, surprise! Yeah, I just happened to be in the neighborhood and felt a little scummy. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> and, yeah... That's retarded! That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Bad. Yeah. Bad excuse. Well, the thing is, like, cleaning himself isn't going to help the scum, because that's just his personality. Let me just say, like, if I live alone and I get home and I hear the shower running, I'm calling the cops immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm not even stepping foot into my apartment. I, but, hey, there's somebody in my house showering, and I don't know. You know what you do? You put a chair uh, to the doorknob so they can't get out. Yeah. And yeah, then, you, then you call the cops. Hopefully that door, I don't remember, but I don't. Uh, hopefully it didn't open in. <laughs> That'd be really funny if it did, and you still put the chair there. Just, it just falls in. Ah, son of a bitch. 
Um, yeah, uh, take the key. So at that in that scene, just to skip ahead for a sec, because I do have something to say about Jeff Goldblum just saying cheeseburger with jazz hands. <laughs> so in this fucking scene, after he gets dragged out of the shower by uh, cold water, which, by the way, as a plumber, I can tell you that doesn't happen anymore. Only in very old houses are the toilet lines and shower lines tied together in such a way. Hmm. Oh, Enjoy well, that, that information. That's good to know. So in old houses, you could be potentially showering in fecal matter. Oh, no, because that's called back siphonage, and we do things to prevent that from happening. Oh, uh, well, I don't believe that, so <laughs> I'm never going to shower in an old-ass house. Yeah, I mean, you probably do your best to not do that anyway. Who knows what kind of black mold exists literally everywhere. Mm. Um, at one point, though, Gina Davis, uh, when trying to kick him out, goes, Are you getting out, or am I? Uh, it's your house. Yeah, and you should get your key back. You should also definitely get your key back. Yeah. Get your key back when you dump a person. For sure, yeah. If they say they're going to keep it for whatever, no, I'm going to begin bashing your face in until the key falls yeah. out of your hand. Yeah, I'm just going to stab you with my key. Yep. Yeah. no, you got to, you, yeah, you're not welcome back. No. So... Yeah, uh, Jeff Goldblum, and now I believe this is when she publishes the story against his wishes, um, and he gets very upset. But uh, after she leaves, and he doesn't want, he's like, eh, I don't know how much information about this I want to share with you. Um, and now tell me, just stop me if the timeline's wrong. Okay. But I'm pretty okay. sure this is when it happens. Uh, he shows up at the old office there mm -hmm. after the article gets published. Uh, with interest in talking to this reporter because he decides that he wants to talk about his telepods now. Okay, uh, so it didn't get published, but okay. she was letting her boss listen to that sneaky yes. tape she recorded. Okay, and Good. then yeah, he was like, because he would, she wouldn't give him the tape. That's why he was pissed. Yeah, and okay. then um, I remember these things. Now. And then his idea would to like stop the article from happening was like, no, let's write a book. Yeah, so that not the, a bad idea. The end of the book could be. When when like his telepods are finished mm -hmm. and people can actually, so yeah. he's smart. So yeah, his idea to write the book, uh, his way of <laughs> getting her to sit down to lunch is to say cheeseburger right in her face with jazz hands. Oh yeah, the jazziest hands. And at that point, uh, all of his creepiness originally was redeemed for me because that's the best thing ever. Oh yeah, I got one word for you, cheeseburger. And then imagine the jazziest dance. But then also at the restaurant, he pulls the lettuce out of the cheeseburger like a fucking maniac. So I don't know. Hmm. I don't know where I stand on that. Well, I mean, I also only want so much lettuce on a cheeseburger. Like, there seemed to be an appropriate amount. Yeah. And like, I don't, if it's like, if you're giving me a cheeseburger and you just put like a big leaf of lettuce on it, mm -hmm. I'm taking it off. Okay. I, he doesn't, like, I want take it shredded. Off, he doesn't take off the whole leaf though. He's like picking at pieces of lettuce. And just eating them individually. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, then it's because he's a fucking insect. <laughs> this goddamn nightmare. He's also, already an insect. Uh, during that scene, he talks as if he's holding a microphone. I just immediately thought of me doing this right mm -hmm. here as, mm -hmm. we're, as we speak. Yep. I was like, oh, that's how he's speaking. Yeah, he's Jay just did a, a whole hand motion. Yeah. And uh, he gave me a, a look that You'll said, I'm talking into a goddamn microphone mm -hmm. without the vulgarness, which was really nice. Uh, that's just my tacit. Uh, state of being, so that's fine. Uh, so, uh... After Stathis gets out, somehow he still has the key. She, he never gives the key back. No. That's, uh, so that's bad. Um, and then after that scene, um, they, uh, they, do you want... Mm. I didn't write anything until, uh, there was the, the, the monkey test. Yeah, uh, because you just go straight to that. Yeah, okay, good, because alarming scene. Uh, Veronica calls Stathis a, a schmuck. Right before that, that, oh, that burn. made me happy. Let's bring back burn. that word. Let's yeah. not because it's Jewish. Let's not just let them have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! I can think of a couple words that I want everybody to have. <laughs> uh, again oh. with the okay. So now uh, Veronica's back at the lab. Yeah, she is, and we're about to try the first uh, non-inanimate test. Yeah, because uh, up until this point. Only nanimate objects. Yeah. <laughs> or sorry, inanimate. Nan nanimate is uh, is the opposite of inanimate, in case That's, you didn't know. I, well, I, you added an N. Yeah, but, well, but I do whatever I want. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Sort of the that's sort of the whole thing. That's generally how language develops. Um, people like you are wild cards, and then suddenly people are saying gnarly. 
boom. Yeah. Boom. Uh, so yeah, yeah. He, they, he's only, he's never done a living thing. And then mm-hmm. he's, he's, he had described, he told that to Veronica while yeah. they were eating hamburgers. Yeah. And she's like, well, what happens? And then he like motions towards the burger or so, or she's like yeah, something like that. I yeah. don't know. He compares that's it. That's what to, he does. And he goes, not while we're eating. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's good. It's good to have while you're really not while you're good eating. That he said that because you get to see what happens immediately after, mm-hmm. as if she was like, "Oh yeah, bet." <laughs> uh, it was like, and he took her back, and he's like, "Well, let's let me get a monkey on such such short notice." Hold on, let me call the baboon guy. I need. Yeah, I also wrote down where is he getting these baboons from, and like once you see what happens to the first baboon. Mm-hmm. Wherein then does the second baboon yeah. just get handed to him? Yeah. Like, we saw what you hap- Where's the first baboon? Where is the first baboon? What did you do to the baboon? <laughs> what did you do? Because <laughs> he turns that baboon inside out. So, yeah, I was like, well, you technically did successfully teleport it from one to another. It's just inside out now. Yeah. Y- yeah. Which, depending on your motivations, could either be a positive or a negative. Like, if you're Lex Luthor, then that's just fine. Yeah. Oh, this is functioning exactly how I want it to. How 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 regular do you want your baboons? Because we're, <laughs> so we're serving them inside out today. Rare. Rare? Uh, do you want to see all of the guts? Or yeah. do you just want to have it breathe horrifically like a dying monkey? And then scream. Yes. Scream a blood curdling. You'll never forget it if you're Jeff Goldblum or Gina Davis scream. Well, I mean, what else do you do when you've been turned inside out? I'm surprised that you could even because your vocal cords would be on the outside now. Well, maybe it's louder. Maybe you're, it's louder that yeah, way. Yeah, well, you're just vibrating the rest of the meat. Okay. Yeah. But vibrating meat. I, well, I need you to enjoy that piece of information. That's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're just never going to invent an inside out monkey. Yeah, because as if seeing that inside out monkey wasn't bad enough. The last thing that gross white dudes need is vibrating meat. Yeah. I, you kind of already have it. <laughs> I wonder if fleshlights vibrate. I'm sure there's some. I uh, I don't know. Um, and, you know, I haven't needed to find out yet, so I'm yeah. pretty happy with that. I fucking wrote down... Okay, so, again, the things in the telepod get scanned for their for their matter. Yeah. And this monkey has 2,000 milliliters of plasma in it. Whew. Which means human beings must have a shitload of plasma. Which And so what you're saying is to donate plasma? Yeah. Because uh, today. you get money and a cookie, and sometimes you get the blood back without the plasma. I'm going to go ahead and just, like, you keep that, too. Yeah, have uh, it. You've taken it out and it's been in a bag. I don't want that back in. Consider this a double donation. <laughs> there you go. Do there I you get go. a second cookie if you keep the blood? I don't. That's... Honestly, if they're not giving you a second cookie at that point, yeah. you should get the blood back. That's a fucking fair trade for me. Oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're they're filming this for some reason because you mm. know how, like, when you're writing a book, you can include video footage yeah. and... And all yeah. of that. Um, this is for reference for the same reason that people carry on tape recorders when they're writing books. All okay? right. All right. It's a journalist thing. And you're writing a book, so you need a lot of uh, visuals. And yeah. if we're go- if over a period of months we're developing this technology, you're- some things are going to slip through the cracks. All right. Now, all right. I would argue that an inside out monkey is something you will never, ever forget until you die. Yeah. Um. But and just in case it does slip through the cracks mm-hmm. and you're like old age dementia <laughs> and you want to be like what happens when we put that monkey in hmm. it's well, not ringing a bell for me slap that vhs tape into the mm-hmm. vhs converter and have those wires run into the dvd player yeah so that we can watch it on this plasma screen tv and then promptly rewind it all the way to the beginning so that somebody like your grandmother doesn't absolutely just hit play and is scarred for life mm. oh also it's not even a vhs tape it's it is beta. It's a beta that is, Max. That is a beta camera. Oh. It, that's how old this movie is. It's that that camera is recording on something you've probably never heard of. Yeah, it's highly likely that you haven't, in fact. You know why? Because you couldn't rewind it. <laughs> you couldn't there was no fast rewind. It you hit play in backwards. That's I, that's how you rewind oh, beta. So you had to just like Watch the entire thing in reverse to get to the beginning. Yes, you did. That's an afternoon. Yep, and that's why Beta did not do well. Oh my god! I I, I think. Don't quote me, but that's I'm pretty a, sure that's a great reason for a company to uh, disintegrate. Yeah, yeah. When VHS comes along and goes, "Hey, man, you hit this button, and ten minutes later, you can watch the Matrix again." <laughs> 
And then everybody who has beta is just like, oh, that oh. must be nice. How long do you think the Matrix is? That's like a Learjet. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the bullet train of tapes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, they're filming this whole process. And then, yeah, so they could remember, like, mm. Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum's wicked quote after he sees his Inside Out monkey, which is just, fuck. <laughs> She's like, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, fuck. Yeah, he Well, that's good. The that. world wants to know. <laughs> yeah, do they? I, and I wrote that down. That's the best line. He's like, what are you thinking? The world's going to mm-hmm. want to know. Fuck is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Second best line. You're a real fucking drag. You know that? Oh, my God. Yes. Right in her face. I love that. Because she doesn't want to maybe get turned inside out. Yeah. She doesn't Reasonable. want... She doesn't want her body taken apart molecule by molecule yeah. and reassembled. Yeah. Yeah. What a fucking drag. So here's the thing I wrote down, and this isn't scientifically accurate by any means, but sort of like why animate objects are an issue for a telepod. Mm. Um, All of the parts inside of you are constantly moving. That's fair. You're talking about fucking central nervous system. You're talking about blood flow. You're talking about just like chemical reactions in the brain in order for you to function properly. Yeah. And a computer has to remember all that. So what you're saying is the problem isn't the flesh. No. It's what it's everything else. Now there is blood in the flesh, so it's what the flesh is made up of. But hey, hey, hey flesh is flesh. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh that's like the least of your concerns. I would be worried about brain turning to soup. Yeah, soup brain. And uh wires just looking like you threw out a computer and then stuffed all the wires in a container for five years. Yeah. And that's the inside of your brain now on the other side of this pod. I'd be worried. I mean, like, that is tor- terrible. It's just terrible. But I'd also yep. be worried about, like, just coming out with, like, my left arm on my right arm and my right arm on my left arm. Because yeah. that's going to fuck everything up. That could very well happen. That's going to fuck my whole life up. you got to relearn how to, like, write. Mm-hmm. Your dominant hand switched. You're going to be reaching for shit with like what you think is your dominant hand. You're like, what the fucking, what one of my fingers are fucked? What what, what, what am I, what am I, dumb? (laughs) Can't pick up this pencil? I'm dumb? Do I have CTE? Uh, So immediately after this monkey scene, Mm -hmm. uh, journalism gets a little bias. Yeah, it does. From behind. Something about seeing a monkey inside out really gets Veronica fired up. Yeah, yeah. She goes. I think it's just all the exposed meat. Yeah, she sees that monkey inside out, and she's like, oh, oh, you got mm, you got five sets of the same clothes, one for every day of the week. And you wear your shoes to the couch bed? Mm, yeah, don't even take them off. Let's peel your pants off over top of your Birkenstocks. Yeah, or- and try not to laugh hysterically at how comedic this looks. Yeah. Like a fucking Abbott and Costello sketch. <laughs> he's trying to, like, undress, and the shirt just doesn't come off his arms properly, and he's running around his apartment. Moral of the story is always take your shoes off before your pants. Here's the thing for Never wear you, your shoes indoors. How about that? Yep. Too? That's what literally what I was for you Americans out there. Take your fucking shoes off when you get in your house. You, what? what I, the fact that people aren't doing that. Yeah. Oh, do you like cleaning? Do you never step on grass that potentially has dog shit in it? Yeah. Wh- where's all the dog shit going in America? Yeah. There's got to be a big pile of it somewhere. There's no way you guys are so considerate that every one of you bags your dog shit. I think it might be the exact opposite. Yeah. I think very few bag their dog shit. That's definitely the more likely scenario. <laughs> so y'all just like avoid fun so that you can wear your shoes in the house. Apparently. My shoes get dirty when I go and check the mail. <laughs> I don't take mine into the house that's just yeah because they're shoes no there's a mat by the front door and that's where they go and they stay until i go outside yeah. so um just just take note that, that, that that's all we want is just take note um speaking of things worth taking note of number one uh the only people who have the exact same outfit for every single day are serial killers mm, and einstein and einstein who if he weren't so good at science and knew that he'd probably be a serial killer you know what's really really funny Mm-hmm. Uh, I noted down like that kind of makes sense. I'm, 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 I, I, I could do one. It does one, one pair of clothes for the rest of my life. You're working on theory of relativity, like the biggest brain shit that's ever existed in the history of humanity. Why you got to worry about your socks being mismatched? Difference between me and Einstein, though. If I was working on that shit, I'd be naked. <laughs> I'd be butt the fuck ass naked. And if you come in, I'm like, I'm doing math. <laughs> Why would you just walk in? I'm doing math. I need to be naked to do the math. (laughs) 
Uh, it's the purest form. I can't be tripping over my own socks yeah. while I'm naked doing math. Worrying about my shirt riding up on me in this uncomfortable wood chair from 19 fucking 12. 19 dickety two, actually. Dickety two. If, if, if you look it up, it's actually dickety two. Dickety two. Uh, so this I is where... That's so bad. <laughs> this is where my haiku comes in. Yes. Because they fuck. Yeah, they do. And they... <laughs> They fuck like fat people. <laughs> On their side. From behind. From behind. Uh so here's here's the final here's the final haiku. Jeff Goldblum gets it. <laughs> On his side and from behind. Life uh finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best haiku you've ever written Here- in your life. Here, here's here's the here's the other iteration. Yeah. With no dinos in sight, slamming from the back like a fly, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> I I really slamming. Uh, based on the horn section in this scene, I don't think there was any aggression involved whatsoever. I just really wanted to say the phrase slamming from behind. They got like fucking saxophones and trumpets playing like goddamn Rod Stewart song. Well, he's, I mean, and and, it's passionate and he's slamming from the back like a fly. Yeah. I guess flies do that. Don't they? I, uh, I have, I mean, they, they definitely, uh, like I've seen a lot of flies banging. Mm-hmm. If you see flies, you're going to see them banging eventually. Oh yeah. They, it's, it's just a given like <laughs> no nope. watch a squirrel long enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but with flies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, and, and yeah, so that happens and they bang on like a microchip. Yeah. And then they, he just like yanks it out of his <laughs> skin. He's like, oh, yeah, there's that fucking uh, just random microchip. I want you to know I wrote down, I also sometimes have chips in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too far fetched, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> sometimes you roll over onto a chip. <laughs> and you go, that's where that went. Oh. I don't think the microchip was jalapeno cheddar flavored, is the only difference. It's all too real. <laughs> it's all too real. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. So th- before he starts really considering putting himself in the telepod, mm. he tries some meat. Yes, he does. Now it's dead meat, so it's like a compromise between animate and inanimate. Yes, because it's not moving, but it's still his flesh, which he's again like a serial killer, so hung up on flesh. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he loves flesh more than Leatherface. Oh, that and that dude wears it. Yeah. So he cooks. Uh, he teleports half a steak, and then uh, in a spectacular uh, way of defeating the purpose of the entire endeavor, cooks the teleported steak and the unteleported steak in the same pan. Oh God! Yep. There Whoops. you go. That's cross contamination. That is. That's how you get salmonella. That's how you. That's how you get teleportinella. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> That's how you you handle a raw turkey, and then you fucking dick around with a salad. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Mm-hmm. Food poisoning. Yeah, ruined Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, uh, you know, but very generous with his... Uh, it was a nice cut of meat. And yeah. he's like, here, Veronica, try both. Oh, yeah, and the, she eats that first steak, and she's like, this is good. I like this. It, it needs some finesse, I think, is what she said. Yeah, but Which I mean, is a very passive-aggressive way of saying some fucking salt and pepper on that, you idiot. Or where's the ketchup? Yeah, which if you're putting ketchup on steak, uh, I've sworn you off as a person. Oh. You know what? Pork chops. I do it on pork chops. That's fine. Okay. Because pork chops are mostly garbage. <laughs> so And so is ketchup, so they go together well. Wow. Um. Yeah, yeah, so she eats that. First half a steak. Mm-hmm. She's like, all right. Goes for the teleported steak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, well, doesn't this... really put out much of a fight. Well, about she does. the reconstructed meat. Well, she, she's like, hey, hey, I teleported the steak. And what she says mm. was, <clears throat> are you serious? A monkey just came apart in there. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, a wicked point, actually. That's a good reason to not put the meat in your mouth. That Absolutely. Was in there. But Jeff Goldblum, being the thinker, mm-hmm. reminds her, hey, It's a baboon. Eat it. (laughs) Immediately, all of her qualms about that inside-out monkey touching or being near the food she's eating. 
Yeah. Nah, right in her mouth. So, because if it were a monkey, that would be disgusting. Oh, yeah, yeah, You'd yeah. You'd never but oh, a yeah. baboon. Baboon with their big red ass. Yeah, of this, course. Yeah, I, I made sure this part slapped the ass. This steak reminds me of the ass that I saw earlier. Yeah. Both the inside and out of. <laughs> yeah, good. That Yeah, no, gross. Oh, God. Teleported steak in the fucking meat monkey f- fucking chamber. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey. But yeah, she eats it, and she's like, oh, it doesn't taste right. Mm-hmm. And then so Jeff immediately... His revelation. Boom. That light bulb right on. I know exactly what I got to type into this this computer from the first computer ever made. Flesh. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you noticed how excitedly runway model he strutted over to that computer when he realized he had to type some things in. I didn't, but I'm picturing him really throwing his ass. Yes. Okay. Ass and hips. Hips and nips, dude. Otherwise, you can't sell it. Did he? Did he turn? Did he do the like the turn at the end? I of the... wish. Ah, uh, but you get to see him from the back, just mm, like Chris Pine. <laughs> and it's I. I mean, I'm not gay, <laughs> but I could see it happening. He's beautiful. I don't. Know, I don't know who Chris Pine is. Oh no, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about Jeff Goldblum. No, no, he uh, being uh, caramel and wonderful. You know, he aged very well. Uh, almost not at all. Yeah, he he really pulled. Uh, oh God, what's that guy's name uh, from Parks and Rec? Uh, fucking Nicholas Cage to some degree. Um, which guy? The guy who's also from Wayne's World. Oh, I'm not going to know that. You are, because he's the boss who runs. Oh, Ron Swanson? No. Oh, oh, Rob Lowe. Yeah, you go. That vampire. Yeah, Rob Lowe is like 70. You'd never know it. I'm pretty sure he he drinks blood. Not only is he 70, but he used to be hardcore addicted to drugs. Yeah. Like he, a lot. I think he's done a couple things that he's he shouldn't be proud of. Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard, and I don't want to like throw yeah. it out there because I don't know if it's true. Well, but there's some allegations. Yeah, back when it was acceptable to do, he happened to date a very young person, I believe. I carumba. <clears throat> dot com. Yeah. Slash login. The climate about 30 year age gaps when you're 45 used to be different. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a lot creepier these days. Mm-hmm. I think it was probably pretty creepier. creepy back then, too, but nobody said anything. Huh. <sighs> um,. So, yeah, she does, she eats the steak. Yeah, she eats the steak. <laughs> right, let's, Jeff let's, Goldblum has his revelation. Yeah. And goes over to the computer to do hard science work. And, and she finds this little magazine, like something that was slipped under the door yeah. and addressed to her. Lo and yeah, behold, yeah. it's the article that her boss just threw together. Because her boss uh, doesn't like that there might be a little bit more than journalism happening. Yeah, he doesn't like the uh, the fly action. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, he's, he's a... Very much against that. <laughs> so here's the problem with Stathis in this scene. He has followed Veronica to um, uh, uh, Seth Brundle's science lab here. The, br- the, the Brundle zone. Here's a couple things he did wrong. Uh, he drove his personal vehicle. Mm-hmm. He drove a $100,000 personal vehicle with a vanity plate, which means he's immediately recognizable. As a, as a former private investigator, he did everything wrong when following somebody covertly. Well, he it's almost as if he had a handbook on how to be a good P.I. and went, fuck all that. I'll just read the back. And so here's the thing, right? Like she was at the lab when the sun was up Mm -hmm. and she didn't leave until nightfall. Oh, boy. There better be some science going on in there. Which means this motherfucker camped out out front of this fucking industrial building all day in a Mercedes that's worth six figures. Oh, boy. And he didn't get raped and murdered. Well, uh, the 80s were a different time, apparently. They sure were. Uh, uh, safer, I guess? I guess. For, yeah, a lot safer for white people to sit around in expensive cars in bad neighborhoods. With that being said, it's also the 80s, and Jeff Goldblum was quite skinny, so I don't know why Gina wasn't uh, worried about AIDS. Because it was everywhere. AIDS was like four years old at that point. And no, she just doesn't give a fuck. Well, you don't know, maybe he wrapped it. I don't think he did. Well... You know, at the beginning, she's like, you don't get out much. And he's like, you can tell? Mm-hmm. So, obviously, you know. Oh, so he's got, like, the condom from, like, 10th grade well, no, in the I... drawer. The one that, when you open it up, it just uh, disintegrates into dust. No, I think she's just taking his word for it that he doesn't bang. Okay, and, I understand. And she can tell. I get it. She's got that third sense. He also conducts some pretty uh, uh, human, humanly atrocious experiments. 
So who knows what he's putting in, in his body? <laughs> he put a fly in there. Oh God. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Gina r- rushes off to like. Oh yes. Okay. Talk no, to her t- boss. Yeah. Continue your thing because yeah. you said the what you thought was the best line in the movie. I said what I thought this, the second best line was, and then I read just now what the actual best line. In the yeah. Movie. Yeah. She drives off to work uh, to confront her boss about printing the story that she didn't give him permission to print. Mm-hmm. And um and 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 she's like, hey, listen, look, you can't print that yet because it's big things are coming. I'm I'm on to something big. Mm-hmm. And then, whereas most journalistic bosses would be like, "Oh, this is a developing story that yeah. you're keeping close, and I'm going to give you the tether required mm-hmm. in order to uh, unbiasedly, which is already flown, but uh, write this story in the way that yeah. your journalistic voice would." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, yeah, he doesn't say that uh, at all. Actually, no. What do, what does he say? Um, I believe around this time, uh, yeah, right after she says, "I'm finally on to something that's big, huge." Uh, he says, yeah, what? His cock? <coughs> yeah, yeah, he certainly says that. Um, now, if I was Veronica, I'd be like, well, first of all, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but of also course. more than that. <laughs> Stathis. Oh my God. Um, yeah, just to be upfront, uh, actually, uh, we do it from the side. Uh, we we lay down. It's a it's a lazy <laughs> yeah. it's a lazy Sunday morning. Get way into it about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this takes place right in a leather jacket store. Oh, you are correct. Because you know what I I didn't note, but I when I watched this morning, I did. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, she's like looking at these. She's trying to pick out clothes for Jeff Goldblum. A nice jacket for my friend Seth. Yeah, and if you scan the background, okay, you can spot Stathis mm. because he's standing behind the shortest man in the world. <laughs> he is towering over this man whom I assume he was meant to be hiding behind. I didn't see but that. But he's just a little tiny man who's just like looking around. And but yeah, Stathis is just like over top of him, just like. <laughs> Like Frankenstein. Yeah, he's looming, just lurching forward, trying to creep. I did not see that at all. Oh, God. I'm really happy you said that, because that's fucking beautiful. Yeah, just not at all hidden. Oh, Christ. It's a nice jacket. Like, it's a fucking, it must be a high-end store. It is. It's leather, man. It's a fine jacket store. Mm-hmm. Um, And then I think it cut to right to Monkey Test 2 Electric Boogaloo. Now, this is the thing, right? Uh, Jeff Goldblum... Or Seth. I just, I'm going back and forth on that. Hey, hey. Uh, Anarchy podcast. Uh, establishes that this is the baboon's brother. Good God. I forgot about that. And apologizes for murdering him. Ugh. As if he knows. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure the baboon was grasping it until he actually apologized. Right. And then the baboon... Got distracted by a fly in the room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As baboons do. Because they don't give a fuck about shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the animal animals. kingdom is, yeah, much less emotional. Yeah. They, they do a lot of things that people go to jail for. Yeah. And uh, then they just go eat food. Yeah, they do. And that's they the fucking eat, life. They eat food and shit at the same time. Yeah. A lot sometimes of the time. they fucking do that, don't they? But that's animals. We, yeah. We, we can't do that. <sighs> no, that's bad. <laughs> Have you ever walked in on somebody fucking shitting it with like a chocolate bar? <laughs> like that's too close. I can honestly say I've never walked in on anybody sitting on the toilet and also eating. Mm. I'm, now, I may have brought like a drink in with me once or twice. Now in the pool is another story. Yeah. Well, it's chlorinated. Yep. That's sanitary. And you can swim away from it. Uh, I would say don't shit in the pool though. That's yeah. that's making it. That's a bad time for everybody but hey. you. It's uh I watched so you know Action Park the uh movie that Johnny Knoxville made that's terrible. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Uh so a documentary came out in 2020 about the same park. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it. I th- I haven't seen it but I've I've probably seen parts of it. Uh two things that I want to point out about this park um as per the uh teenagers, literal teenagers who were drunk who ran it. Uh they all had walkie-talkies and when sh- somebody shit in the water park area, they would call it a code brown. <laughs> Well, what other what other color do you choose? And uh, they would put wristbands on people that they had to uh, save from nearly drowning, uh, who insisted on going back in the water afterward. That said CFS on it. Oh no! And that stood for can't fucking swim. Oh, okay, 
I was thinking it was like something like a do not save. Oh, no, no. <laughs> swim. That's funny. But oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Can't fucking swim. Uh, but we have so little control over the people in our park that they're just going to try anyway. Yeah. And, you know, while we're on the topic, there is a difference between shitting in the pool and shitting into the pool. What, what parties are you going to where people are just squatting off the diving board like that? Parties that get ruined. Yeah, right away <laughs> by that. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, one, one's you an gotta accident. You got to watch the whole process. One's an accident. One's a mistake. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> There's not enough chlorine in the world. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Well, I mean, back to this monkey. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the monkey goes right in there. Mm-hmm. It was right in there. It's got no problem. It's like there was monkey food right in there. Yeah, as, as he just as if he couldn't smell the carnage that just yeah. took place the day before. <laughs> and you know how unsanitary these scientific conditions are because a fly gets in. So it's not like Jeff Goldblum is bleaching out the telepod when he's no, done. no. And like, who is this baboon guy? Yeah, exactly. The, the next day, yeah, I need another. Not only that. Okay, I'll give you a sibling. Yeah, you know what? Here's the matching baboon to the set. Yeah. Um, Let's just eradicate this strain. Yeah, absolutely. So it throws the baboon in there. Baboon teleports. And then the door opens Mm -hmm. automatically. Yep. uh, Smoke. Yeah. Fog. As if the monster monkey isn't going to run out and just go wild. Yeah, because, you know, that's a very uh, possible thing that could happen. The last monkey became a monster. Mm -hmm. This one. What's what's to say it's not going to be a monster that runs out and scratches your fucking face off? Which sometimes, like, just regular monkeys do that. All monkeys do that. Mm-hmm. If, if you see a monkey, it's going to do that. Eventually. All monkeys do that or die. <laughs> they they either, they either do that or they die doing that. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, lo and behold, the monkey runs out and you're like, oh, here it comes. Mm-hmm. But then it's just a like, oh, hey, what's up, buddy? And he oh. jumps into his arms like a like a dog. I was scared in there. Yeah, honestly, my first thought was like, so you're going to have that automatically open. The last time you had to open it yourself yeah. to reveal this monkey. But you're just going to have it open this time so that this m- monkey you reassembled mm-hmm. can neander out on its own. Putting a great deal of faith in the integrity of whatever you just moved from one place to another. Yeah, uh, like in 28 days later we saw it the yeah. cage was open. The you m- open the cage and the mo- you're fucked. Yep, yep. Great point. Didn't think about that. Leave the monkey cage closed. I was I was uh mostly just like enjoying the wholesome nature of what happened. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, a monkey hug." No, I was concerned. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> here here comes the demon monkey." Yeah. The demon monkey that fucks it all up for everybody. Oh my god. Yeah. And so and then and so Jeff Goldblum's like, oh shit, yo, it's 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 fucking game time up in here, isn't it? Well, I mean, it takes uh, his girlfriend going. This is when she goes to like, and she come, yeah, yeah, she goes to see her boss about this article. We got the timeline all messed up. That's but, fine. It's, I mean, it's not the first time it's happened. I, I think forty percent of these people aren't watching the movie anyway. You we we can say anything. This at one this at point. least you should because it's good. Yeah, th- this one's gonna get a solid something or other at you the end. You know who did was Zach. Okay, there. He- so, Somebody shout out to Zach for actually watching. Somebody's taking our suggestions. Uh, unfortunately, watching the Human Centipede last time. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Um. So yeah, she takes off, and he kind of puts two and two together mm-hmm. that her boss is her ex. Yeah, yeah. And then being uh, just just a simple minded idiot, <laughs> he spirals and starts drinking. And well, he had this nice fucking dinner set out well, with he w- Chinese food, which I would argue is very romantic. Spicy eggplant. Extremely. That's a very romantic because it's like uh, we're both diving into the hazard that is Chinese fast food. A lot of the time, it's mm-hmm. like a fifty fit. You're you're rolling the dice on the quality of that. And and to people who are going to deliver to an industrial warehouse, yeah, yeah, good luck. Also, like the restaurants in that area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's probably next door. He's got the leaflet on so, his door a couple yeah. times. Oh God, um, <laughs> Ming Ching's Chernobyl, <laughs> Chinese. Um, yeah, and so he's gonna order Chinese, and he pops out a bottle of champagne. Mm-hmm. She's like, "Hold on, I gotta go see my boss." Mm-hmm. And so, like, uh, just a fucking high schooler, he 
swigs half of this bottle of champagne and just makes an irrational decision. So they establish pretty early in this movie that he's an alcoholic lightweight. Yeah, yeah, he they doesn't do. drink very often. No, he's he's a little bit buzzed off of like one drink at this fucking science party, and then yeah, he spills this whole thing. <laughs> and he goes, "Fuck it, this bottle's mine now." And yeah, he gets like three solid swigs in, and uh, the third one, I think, he gets more on him than in him. Which is method acting. Well, yeah, he's <laughs> by that third swig. If you're not wasted, you I don't know who isn't. Around this time, as he's muttering to himself, uh, he's uh, talking about um, how the letter was addressed, and he figures it's from the desk of Stathis Barnes, which mm-hmm. is Stathis's last name. And then he goes from under the desk of Stathis Barnes. <laughs> I did not catch that. Yeah, he fucking said oh that Oh, my shit. God. Uh, Veronica's doing the old office blow. Mm, well, uh... I could relate very uh, easily with this scene, though, because sometimes when I'm drunk, I do talk to my cat. Well, I mean... In the same way that he talks to this baboon in the chair, sitting. Just like, you don't think she's fucking her boss, do you? Yeah. <laughs> That's... I, I'm picturing you doing it. It's very sad. I fucking would. <laughs> My cat's just meowing for more food at me. Yeah, and I mean, that's what she wants, but you're like, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So, so he's like, you know what? Fuck this bitch. Yeah, I'm going to teleport this shit out myself. And this is uh, an adage that uh, usually people say it differently mm. when it comes to relationship turmoil. Never get into a teleporter angry. You know what? You know what? Moral of the story. Also, like, just jerk off and the post not clarity will be like, maybe I shouldn't get in the telepod yet. Y- yeah, yeah. Instead of, I want to spite this woman who bangs really well on her side. Have have some have some coffee. Think about it. Y- no. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, he, he takes all of his, all of his clothes off. Because you know what? The one thing the teleporter can do is teleport clothes. <laughs> but... So here's the, this is confusing to me because I like teleporters. I assume what happens is a fly gets into the fucking telepod with him, mm-hmm. and the fly DNA gets assimilated into his DNA. Yeah, make no bones about it. There was a fly in the room, the yeah. loudest fly in <laughs> that has ever existed. It was like listening to a helicopter. It was louder than his fucking dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just picture just like he's trying to do the his line and just a helicopter's hovering over it, just papers going everywhere. He's like, fucking Veronica! <laughs> this bitch! Yeah. Monkey, get me the teleporter! <laughs> just shit going everywhere. That monkey becomes fucking what's his name from is it Igor from Frankenstein? Yeah, yeah. Uh now, so he takes his clothes off. Why? Because it's a beautiful scene, and <laughs> it's just a beautiful naked scene. We and need you I, to be naked for this. I just, I feel like I have to be naked. Mm-hmm. It's just a beautiful naked scene. This is, it's, maybe it's a purity thing, which is ironic, because there's a fly in there. Yeah, maybe, but either way, yeah, that fly wastes no time. And the monkey sees it, the monkey says, yeah. dick all. No, the monkey's like, yeah, you put me through that shit? Enjoy, fuckface. <laughs> You're gonna love this. Love it. Uh, so yeah, and I mean, given the state of his fucking apartment, keeping monkeys around, of course there's gonna be flies. Yeah. Yeah. Monkeys, um, open champagne spilt on the floor from your mouth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, also, this is worth noting, and I don't know how it would affect things if there were no fly in there, but that means that he was, uh, deconstructed and reconstructed with alcohol in his system. Now, would that just stay in there? Are you that drunk for the rest of your life? Shit. In which case, get me in that telepod. <laughs> You're gonna save so much money, dude. And I, yeah, you're and gonna I, be able to do nothing but <laughs> like the I money stew you'll about save. About being jilted. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's your life now. Uh, but I mean, he comes out pretty sober, so maybe, maybe it it deconstructed the alcohol and turned it into like sugar. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't found know. I found my synopsis, which is just Jeff Goldblum learns the hard way to do dishes more often. <laughs> Fucking Jeff also, Gold nude. Fly tape would have uh, solved this whole problem. Oh yeah. Like thirty cents at the dollar store, just a, a gluey strip. Mm-hmm. Um, you I live have... in a warehouse. <laughs> Get some, you're, uh, there's going to be bugs. No, for sure. Like yeah, you're an industrial warehouse. Every window sill has dead bugs in it. Yep. And where are those bugs come from? Living bugs. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. That's how that works. Um, I... Circle of life. <laughs> I noted down, what if instead of becoming a fly man, Jeff just became really obsessed with shits? 
and just was like, every time he saw a shit pile, I was like, hold up a sec. I got to get in there. Yeah, mm, mm, That's where mm, the good stuff is. Mm, soft, soft, warm. <laughs> ah, ah. Soft and nutrients. loose. Oh my God. Um, But yeah, so, so yeah, they, the fly goes in there. He comes out the other side. Fly's gone. Man. Mm-hmm. The fly didn't get teleported. Didn't notice mm. that the fly was in there in the first place, let alone gone the next. You, you didn't? Because like the he mon- didn't okay I was gonna say the monkey watches the fly he didn't have any idea. Okay. Jeff Goldblum had no fucking idea yeah and, but like you would think like he would just like hold on a second hold on a second oh oh, oh. <laughs> yeah let me just solve that yeah um but yeah so he comes out the other side feeling amazing feeling so fantastic good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, he goes to bed yeah. <laughs> He, he goes sure to bed because he's fucking drunk. <laughs> um, and, and then his girlfriend comes home and she's like, hey, what's up? Mm. He's like, ah, I just teleported myself. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck, your, fuck that whole story. Fuck everything. I just went in there. I did the most important part of this book that you've invested in uh, myself alone. Yeah. And, and I filmed it. it. I filmed it. Dumbass. Fuck you. Yeah. I, t- <laughs> I was feeling jealous. Mm. Mm. Your boss is a uh, boss penis. <laughs> I don't want his boss penis anywhere near you. Uh, so also don't talk to your friends when I'm not around. <laughs> oh boy, and yeah. Then you do, and then you're codependent forever. Yeah, some red flags. I think uh, at some point, um, she refers to the two of them as like an old married couple. Yeah, and I then believe, and then yeah. he and then he's like, yeah, old married couple. Ooh, uh, yikes! Yeah. Yikes! Is this, like the way that he announces, like, or like tries to air out the confusion about the nature of their relationship. Is this a romance we're having? <laughs> Thanks, Ted Bundy. <laughs> I'd like to note it in my diary. <laughs> Which is on skin. <laughs> Good God. Fuck. Uh, so, yeah. Somehow going through this teleporter uh, with the fly has given Jeff Goldblum these superpowers that I didn't think flies were associated with. My thing is, like, have you ever seen a fly sleep? No. Because nope. he mentions that he doesn't sleep. I He also wakes up out of a dead sleep to just catch a fly. Yeah, he like does. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, it turns him into fucking Karate Kid Sensei. Yeah. Which I didn't know flies could catch each other at lightning speed. That's interesting. Yeah, apparently, all, I, all I see flies do are just fucking thump up against a window until they find out that it's... <laughs> it's until they find the open part. That's the best thing they do. That, that's what they're good at. <laughs> that and eating shit. That's what they're... They're too... <laughs> there are two things in their wheelhouse. Nowhere on that list is being able to do a handstand on the arms of a flimsy chair and then do vertical push-ups. Or fucking Cirque du Soleil yeah. gymnastics. Suddenly you're part of the fucking Russian doping gymnastics team. Oh my on god. On a bar that let me plumber, let me tell you something right now. Oh, that's no bar. That's a goddamn pipe. Yes, it is. And it's a it's a black iron pipe, which is threaded, and it's usually for gas. Now uh, Jeff Goldblum in this movie looks to be roughly, if you were to factor in the muscle in his height, I would say somewhere between 180 and 200 pounds. Uh, there are no support. Now, code states that uh, hung pipe needs to, hung rigid pipe needs to be supported every six feet minimum. Across that entire horizontal portion of the pipe that he's hanging off of and doing insane gymnastics where he gets so much height that he runs along the ceiling, there are no supports. Which means that shit is going to bust wide open. Oh, yeah. And then... Also, you're... this building isn't up to code and you're doing science experiments in it. You're dead. That's, it's, it's probably gas pipe. As well, uh, hung rigid pipe. Yeah, I did say hung rigid pipe out loud. You, you certainly I? did. You certainly did. And, and I... that's what exactly what Jeff Goldblum does to several ladies in this film. Yeah, he does. He f- provides it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's how you know I've been doing this fucking job for too long. I didn't even find that funny while I was saying it. Yeah, that was the first... I My eyes widened, and I was just like... God damn it. Where am I going to shoehorn this into the conversation? Yeah. It's hung rigid black pipe <laughs> as well. Because I'm pretty sure it's galvanized black iron. Hung rigid Enjoy. black pipe dot yeah. com. Dot com. And it's 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 literally plumbing. It's like yeah, yeah. It's just it's just threaded fittings for sale from a supplier. <laughs> we, have, we just wrote a whole business right yeah, there. Uh, we're starting that website. It's it's, it's a joke plumbing business. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just fucking plumbing dick puns. That's every fucking like the mission statement. Everything. We uh we we pledge. specialize in laying pipe for homeowners. We we want you to run the thickest pipe. 
<laughs> and the sturdiest pipe deep we, into your basement. We recommend the four inch wide white. <laughs> Come pipes. <laughs> It just evolves into that. There, were, there was nowhere else to go. <laughs> Come pipes. Oh my god. Um, You'll notice that Veronica gets <sighs> very wet watching watching Seth work out. Oh yeah, she yeah. gets so excited that she just can't handle it. Yeah, she does. She flops right on that hung rigid pipe. And I understand it. Yeah. Oh well, hey. I mean, when you see a guy doing that, how do you not? Mm -hmm. How do you not? Um, I mean, you, you just don't sometimes. But how do you not? At some point, for some reason, around this time, um, Jeff Goldblum must have done something to make me write down Buffalo Bill behavior. I have no idea what it could be at this point. Buffalo Bill behavior. He does something that was like, "This is some Silence of the Lambs shit." Like just his, just the way he acts it. Okay. I well, no, I think it was the way that he came toward Veronica. Okay. I, well, I, I hope it comes to you. Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna. No, mm -mm. we're gonna we're gonna get it out of context. I at watched the end. this shit two days ago. So okay, that one I'm not gonna remember. Well, let's pretend like yeah, it's, he probably did a very Buffalo Billy. He probably you know what had I think some. It was what I think it was watching him work out on the chair. Yeah. Okay. Like just getting up out of bed and your girlfriend's in bed and you just go and have like a. Uh, like a slow, aggressive workout session. Mm -hmm. That was that's some Buffalo Bill shit to me. I yeah, think. that and tucking your dick between your legs. Yeah, which I don't think he does, and I don't think he'd be even capable of it because you know this guy's got the hammer. Look at him. Oh yeah, well it's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, it's Jeff Goldblum. He's got, he's got a fucking cudgel with an apple on the end of it. <laughs> I mean, and if anybody proves me otherwise, I'll kill myself. Yeah. So yeah, no, yeah. let me live in my fantasy where Jeff Goldblum mm -hmm. is just laying it. Yeah. He doesn't have a micro penis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, then we, we got like a, a, there is a sugar scene from Men in Black in here where he's, yeah. he's just shoveling sugar into his coffee. And, and at the same time, just freaking the fuck out with excitement so, in a diner so loud apparently splicing yourself with a fly turns you into a cokehead I get, yeah and it gives you no social tact whatsoever and he's, yeah he's like where's that waiter fuck yeah he, he says waiter gets a sentence out where is that waiter jesus christ <laughs> Jesus, yeah, and like it goes from being on coke very quickly to being on meth <laughs> it really does dude he falls apart. Something about being on being half a fly uh, makes you very insistent. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just like kind of going forward, he starts growing some hairs out of his back. From the chip wound. Y yeah, from the chip wound. I don't know. There's no fucking Dorito on earth that would do that to me. <laughs> so those, that's where the similarities end. Yeah. If you get cut up by a Dorito, you should probably call the company. It's Yeah, it's just cheesy. But, uh, yeah, yeah, like, hairs start poking through or that. I didn't put that together that, like, they just probably broke skin and the hairs yeah. just came through. But they're, like, these thick. They're definitely, like, the hairs you find on a fly. It's just big. And fucking Veronica's got, like, a pair of tinning shears to cut these yeah, off Yeah, she with. does. And did you catch, because uh, he mumbled. He mumbled the line. I had to listen to it a few times. But did you catch what Jeff Goldblum said? It was his explanation for growing these hairs. No. He's like, oh, you know. When you age, your hair changes. You know, when I was a young boy, I always dreamed of a hairy body. Yes, I did actually <laughs> catch that. I, I was like the weird. That's that. You, know, you dreamed of a hairy body. That's what you fucking dreamed of. Most people dream of like most kids dream of like being a fire truck. That is what I was about to fucking say. It's <laughs> like that's the dream right there. Nah, I want a hairy. I want to be a hairy boy. Yeah, I want to look like a yeti. Mm, that's that's mm. you're writing that down on like what do you want to be when you grow up like class projects and shit yeah the abominable snowman <laughs> i want to be a rocket star <laughs> yep uh yeah I don't, I don't know what that is but no nope. fucking kids say it yeah they do and they're wrong <laughs> <laughs> they're little assholes is what they are um yeah, and then this is when Jeff Goldblum makes it weird. Mm -hmm. with, oh, this is when. Well, yeah, because it... Be, it wasn't the first time he met her. No, no. This that is, wasn't weird enough. It gets weirder with yeah. the, the non-consensual teleporting threats mm -hmm. and trying to drag somebody into uh, a confined area, which maybe don't do that. Maybe don't try and throw somebody into a confined area. Oh, you're not all that enthusiastic about trying this thing I've tested twice? Yeah, you know this thing you saw pull a monkey apart a day and a half ago? <laughs> yeah, the well... The timeline's real foggy on this one, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, gone ahead and just updated it. We updated mm. the software. I learned the computer. 
<laughs> I, I done learned it a thing or two about <laughs> putting two people in one spot at the same time. Now, look at these hairs I got growing out my back. Uh, Don't you want some of those? Those are super pubes that you get from de- from teleporting. I'm super a- pubes. Kill crabs on sight. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're fucking thick and rigid. Uh, <laughs> good lord. Okay. Um, yeah, so he calls her a fucking drag when she's like, please don't put yeah, me in this thing that's gonna drag. turn me into goop and then put me back together. And then, like, as he's getting pissed and making her leave and shit, uh, or not even making her leave, choosing to leave himself to find somebody who will go in the pod, mm-hmm. uh, he waxes so poetic and says, drink deep or drink not from the plasma pool. Oh, he goes off. That was, like, the, the, the headiest... And he's a scientist thing. Yeah, he says in the whole movie. Oh my god! Yeah, he 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 goes off on like the flesh and yeah. the plasma pool. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that what that fucking line is a thinker. Yeah, it is. I had to pause and be like, whoa, <laughs> some deep shit right Jeez. there. Jeez, that's Mother just fucker. like fucking. If you know, don't don't half ass anything. Whole ass one thing. Yeah, and uh, you find that fiery passion and you go for it. You either you either teleport. Or you fucking don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. He's like, get in this pod or die eventually. Yeah. Your choice. <laughs> Flies have a lifespan of several days. <laughs> That's a, Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you must. It's a fucking. Yeah, fly larva once they hatch must feel so energetic for about seven hours. Yeah, and then old age sets in. And you're like, oh, I'm dying now. If they, if they don't fuck within like eight hours, they've missed their window. Yeah. Uh, I, think I, I think that's definitely a fact. Yeah, it might be. We might be just saying things, then yeah. they end up being facts. Yeah. Uh, so Jeff, yeah, he leaves to go to this. Like, yeah, fuck it. Wait, wait. Does is this? Hold on. This is dingiest dive bar on earth. Okay. Yeah. This isn't. This isn't where he goes. Total Kyle. He do He goes Kyle later. I don't know what that is, but well, once you describe it, I believe I will. Um. Total Kyle. Ver- Veronica's like, you're sick, and he's like, yeah. Oh yeah, would a sick guy do this? And he starts punching holes in the wall. <laughs> Because to prove a point, you should always uh, punch holes in the wall. Yeah. That is, that's, that's the way you do the it. the easiest and quickest way to get your message across if you're a wife beater. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he goes to the, the dirtiest bar yeah. to see the dirtiest things. And you know it's the dirtiest bar because you got two guys just tacitly arm wrestling. Yeah. They, it, ever And they're friends. It's Have like it's, they've been doing it for that? like 20 minutes, too. Yeah. We've just, we got this arm wrestling competition going for as long as those guys are playing pool because I have money on both. If you've seen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you've seen, if you see the Terminator 2, mm. it's like the bar from the beginning, but they've unscrewed like 14 light bulbs. Yeah, it's somehow worse than a biker bar. Yeah. Um, and yeah, these two guys are arm wrestling and uh, Jeff uh, loses uh, as, sorry to take over. No, but go for it. My go for description, it. description. Yeah. Uh, loses all sense of perception and good judgment. And uh, find something somehow more disgusting than his face at this point in the movie. Which is scabbed. Oh, yeah. It and is like, falling apart. And it's leaking. And I I don't know if it was like, oh, you're the only woman in within a five-mile radius of this bar I'm in. You'll do. It, she's supposed to have been the only one that was sitting alone at the time. Or something he was like, like... Just something wild like that. But it can't be that he knew what he looked like at this point because he didn't. Because he looks in the mirror later. He look, he looks like faces of meth. Yeah, he sure does. And I was annoyed here because more people... And this is a dirty, dirty bar. Mm-hmm. More people in this bar should have been noticing Jeff Goldblum's face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, generally, when somebody with the facial wounds of a meth addict mm-hmm. approach you... Mm-hmm. You don't respond because what they want is meth. Yeah. And they're looking to see if you have it or know where it comes from. And, I mean, if you don't have it, then you've just created a problem by not having it. Yeah. And that's how you get stabbed by a meth head. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Moral of the story, don't don't talk to Jeff Goldblum if he looks like a meth head. No. Because something bad's going to happen. This hooker, because that's what she is. Is she? I mean, we'll she's call a, her a hooker. She's a... She's a hooker because she's watching the arm wrestling and she goes, I'm here with that guy. And then uh, Jeff Goldblum goes, no, you're not. Mm, yeah, yeah. He's like, if I win this, I'm I'm taking you home for the night. Mm-hmm. As if that's if that constitutes a payment to a, to a pimp. Uh, just <laughs> watch me arm wrestle. And then, like, I thought he just gives this guy a big old compound fracture. Yeah, he does. He wastes no time breaking a man's arm in half to prove a point. Yeah, and, uh, and then this lady... 
Um, this fucking lady. Well, she leaves with a complete stranger who just broke mm-hmm. a man's arm so much the bone protruded through the skin. I believe it's called grievous bodily injury. Absolutely. Uh, she's going to make some biker real happy someday. Not only does she leave with him, uh, she's stoked about oh, what yeah. he did to that guy's arm. Oh, yeah. She just saw something like that happen. She's ready to make some more bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah, she cares very little about her own well-being. I don't remember what exactly she says, but holy fuck, it's like, wow, you really did a number on him. Yeah, she says, are you a bodybuilder? And he's like, yeah, I build bodies. I take them (laughs) apart and I put them back together. What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) Goodbye, I'll be staying with my busted arm friend who I should probably be calling the ambulance for. Oh, that's, yeah... That's something a serial killer says and does. Yeah, um, no thank you. Holy shit. Like a to fucking Jeepers Creepers tapestry. Yeah, my God. And, Ew. And then she's like, okay, well, look, I just want to go to a couple more bars. Yeah. No. <laughs> now they, they do. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they come back in the daytime. So yeah. I don't know how many bars they went to, but they're both completely sober. Well, okay, so Veronica shows up. They bang out. Um... Then he works out for a bit. Uh, he comes back and they bang out. So I don't know how like late at night he left. Probably okay. pretty fucking late. Okay. Well, like what? Maybe, maybe bars slope are open late in whatever place I, this is supposed to be. I don't think this bar has a two a.m. curfew. That's one of those kind of bars. I believe this is a New Orleans twenty four seven bar. Ah, uh, well, uh, for the sake of this, let's pretend it is. Yeah, well, it's the only thing that makes goddamn sense. Well, let's keep our finger out of that hole. Yeah, we'll, we'll let that hole glide. So now, again, you're noticing a uh, trend in uh, <clears throat> Mr. Brundle's judgment here. Uh, I just picked up a whore, mm. and I'm going to take her back to the place where I know my girlfriend is staying still. Mm, mm. And I'm going to assume that's fine. He's got fly brain. Oh, so flat, he's got a little pea brain now. He's he, he, There you go. Yeah. That makes sense, I suppose. I mean, other making the decisions this guy makes, he goes from making a wicked awesome machine that teleports matter mm-hmm. to, like, punching a hole in a wall mm-hmm. and fucking a hooker. Which which happens, like, right now, too. Yeah, yeah. After this, this fucking hooker, let me tell you... I don't know if it's like a fucking integrity move or a scummy bitch thing to do to as you're leaving in case there is any concern as to whether or not they banged while Veronica was gone. Uh, thanks for a great night. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's all, it's all out on the table now. Yeah. As if the fact that I'm wearing nothing but a jacket and underwear wasn't an indicator enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she really didn't need to put a hat on a hat there. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, she cares so very little about her well-being. Mm-hmm. But then when it comes to like getting the teleporter. Nah. No, I see. I see that you're super buff and you broke a dude's arm and that, that could be me in there. Mm-hmm. But this is where I start caring. Yeah. That not after leaving with the man who just mm-hmm. broke a guy's arm for zero reason other than he wanted to steal me away from my friends. I'm in your fucking creepy... Uh, uh, warehouse butchers meat market sliding door laboratory. Yeah. But, but I don't know about the teleport. This, man. yeah, even after she watches him do it. Mm-hmm. Eh, mm, I don't, nah, 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 right, don't want to be a part of this magic trick. Yeah, let's just bang out like crazy. She also offers him an alcohol rub, which, is that a thing? I have no idea. Like, I've never heard of anybody being rubbed with vodka because mm. that would just dry you out that's that's what i was thinking as well it's just gonna dry your skin the fuck out with I, the... I think they just wanted to add something in where it's like a bug wouldn't want to be touched with yeah. alcohol don't touch me with that isopropyl <laughs> yeah ah! also like doesn't she use this fucking champagne uh, which is not that's yeah not great. yeah i you, assume it's supposed to be like amorous you're just gonna be made sticky yeah well and, it, they were anyway by the end of the night <laughs> uh uh and, and it also goes back when um they first lay on that microchip um <clears throat> the, the the Veronica's like, hey, do you have any do you have any disinfectant? And he's like, yeah. no, no, I don't have any of that. Oh, let me just put my mouth on it then. <laughs> she like just kisses it better. Oh, that's good enough. Absolutely. <laughs> With those fucking hairs growing out of it, like, oh, yeah, man, these coarse hairs are probably stabbed me in the tongue when I kissed them. Mm-mm. Um, but yeah, uh, so yes, yeah, she tries to drag this 
who car uh, mm-hmm. to, the, to the teleporter. Veronica mm-hmm. comes in. Mm-hmm. The whole thing goes down. And uh, he starts punching a hole in a wall like a total Kyle to, yeah. to prove whatever point that he was a healthy individual while his face and arms and body look like they're melting like Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking wax figure. Yeah. Because after he punches the hole in the wall, like the next thing he does is like pop his fingers like uh, like medical zits. In between, he kicks Veronica out and says, I don't need you anymore. Which uh, is the opposite of the truth. Yeah, because he goes right to... Also, his <clears throat> ear falls right off as soon as he says that. Dude, his ear. One of the grosser things in this movie is watching that fucking man's ear fall off. Mm-hmm. Happens later, though. Does it happen later? Yeah. Okay. It happens out, and this is the only establishment of time in like, the whole movie. Okay. So he's in, and I can't gloss over. I am physically disgusted by... Um, like popping acne mm. and that's exactly what this motherfucker's fingers do oh he pops his whole fingertip i i can't handle that shit that was so goddamn gross yeah it was like popping a balloon full of potatoes taking your fingernails off one by one slowly is bad enough that is such a meth head thing to fucking do <laughs> yeah it fucking is oh my god like also you, heroin probably yeah you notice your fingernails are coming off let me just solve it. Leave them on. Let them fall off Ugh. the way God intended. Yeah. Good Lord. Um, gl- and then, uh, yeah, so that grossness. Uh, cut to, and this is, again, the only establishment of time progression. It's been four weeks. It's all month. Son of a bitch. It's some, like, one-off comment that he makes on the phone when he contacts Veronica for the right. first time. Right. Right. And in this scene, I noticed that Veronica, first of all, she smokes in her apartment. She smokes in the journalist's office, which I noticed previously. And she has an ashtray the size of a flying saucer you could fit an alien in. I did not catch that. Which means she's a fucking chain smoker from hell. Because how do you fill that? You're just very lazy. You just, yeah. you just don't empty it. I ne- mean, never empty it. Would it would take months. It would, it's, it's the size of a plate. <laughs> well, maybe she has a lot of guests. Maybe she has smoking <laughs> parties. I right, Fine. Um, yeah, somewhere in here, right, right before that, actually, mm. that's when he goes up to his computer and he's like, Hey, what, what, happened? what happened? here?" And the computer's like, Oh yeah, f- fly. Uh, my bad. And, and, uh, I so, didn't mention the fly. And he's like, uh, so did I absorb that fly? Mm-hmm. Because like, that's not a big deal. No, nah, it's just eating a fly. Yeah. We, we've all eaten flies. Probably. You sleep spiders. With, yeah. Sleep with your mouth open. You can't control what goes Thing, in your mouth. Things are going to get in there eventually. And the computer, very upsetting piece of information to just gloss over. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll pretend like we everybody sleeps with the mouth closed. Yeah. Um. And there's this piece of shit computer's like, <laughs> yeah, no. I instead of doing the easy thing, nah, no, nah, fly man, <laughs> fly man. I made it. Look what I did. Look uh, right at it. Yeah. Look at you. Check it out in the mirror there. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. I could have done the easy thing, but I did the the more complicated and awful thing. Actually, now, this, I thought that was a thought that was a mood. <laughs> I was I was having a real uh, the vibe that day was fly man. That's how I made it happen for you. Now I didn't think about how it would have been easier for that computer to just like because it recognized the different DNA patterns. Mm-hmm. Uh, just omit that. Yeah, because it was minuscule. It was small percentages of things, extremely small. And uh, instead, it chose to just put them together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. L- l- genius move. Uh, just a tip for you geneticists out there. Uh, when you're writing a computer to sequence genomes, probably write in the ability to identify two different ones. Yeah. Um, because I feel like that should have been caught by R&D. I, I really... Well, it's just Jeff Goldblum. So I feel like it should have been caught by R&D. <laughs> Look, life finds a way. It, it, it did. And that that way was Jeff not going, was there a fly in here? Yeah. I, I hear a buzzing. <laughs> Looking at the only window to see out in the whole pod for 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't hear that buzzing, even though it was the loudest fly. He almost deserves it at this point. I imagine it was probably even louder in that pod. Um, But uh, yeah. And then... Uh, and he did fucking He calls up his old fling after four weeks, which is... That's too long to wait. If you're gonna hit up somebody that you banged a couple times, I have two weeks. Yeah, yeah, less. Maybe yeah. I'm just too considerate. 
Me Either way, the, apparently she's been fucking hanging on the hook this whole time. And with with that phone call, like being like, you know, it's gotten. He's like, oh man, it's, it's, it's bad. It, over yeah, here. oh, it's real bad. I would get tested. Uh, yeah, I would go right to the hospital. Like, take some blood, make sure there's no uh, boogity booze in there. That Coming we should right be back to the fact that uh, AIDS just yeah, happened to yeah. everyone. Yeah, so get tested. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll come over in like an hour and a half. I just got to go do a blood test real quick to make sure you didn't give me what you have. If you're going to do a guy who looks like he's a meth head, get tested. Mm. Just in general. It doesn't have to be fly meth. Mm. Uh, And then, yeah, right after that, there's a a scene with a donut. um, (laughs) And something happens with a donut that's wildly inappropriate. Yeah, he really lubes up that donut to eat it. Yeah, he does with uh, all of his his uh, well, what do you what, what what stomach acid? I guess. Yeah, I don't. It's uh, I can't remember what he calls it. It's like uh, some kind of uh, corrosive salivary, some mm-hmm. something or other. He starts hitting you with the big science words on the old tape as he starts to deteriorate here. Yeah, and I I can only imagine that like that is what did his teeth. A bit yeah. dirty like that because he doesn't the acid melted his teeth those poor fucking teeth because man. he had nice teeth oh my god they get they they become like when you get when your teeth aren't good anymore and mm-hmm. they go to put the cap on it they have to file your tooth down to yeah. like to fucking shark teeth like the like the fucking uh in uh what's the d- shit movie with ice cube where they go to mars and it's a prison planet Oh, what is that movie? Yeah. But I yeah. I think it's got fucking Mars right in the title. It might. I know which one you're talking about. It's like Monsters from Mars or some shit like that. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Either way, yeah. They all file their teeth down once they escape the prison. And around this time is, uh, yeah, so Veronica shows up. She's quite upset about how he looks. Well, as you should be. Let me tell you, uh, this woman has the resilience and patience of uh, a Buddhist monk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I slide that door open and I look that thing in the face. Guess what? Peace on that. Yeah, not even that. He's like climbing down the wall like Veronica. Excitedly. Yeah, look at it. Look at what I can do. Hey, man, I just found this out. (laughs) It very much reminds me of the the scene from Family Guy with Kermit and Miss Piggy. And they're like looking at his offspring. (laughs) And it's just like, kill me. (laughs) That's that. Those are the vibes I get from looking at the Brundlefly. Oh my god, dude! Brundlefly looks like a burn victim. Brundle Brundlefly looks like he died, and is rotting. Yeah. But <laughs> but his guts haven't figured it out yet. It's a, a, just so everybody knows, he calls himself Brundlefly at this point. Yeah, he does. We didn't just come up with that. Yeah, no, a Brundlefly was uh was his in love with that. And he, yeah, and he's like, "Hey, I know what the disease wants. It's making me something." It's yeah. Well, what do you think? Like a one hundred pound fly, a hundred eighty pound fly, <laughs> Brundle fly. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice to be a fly that big? Mm. His and, experiment and, was a success. And the whole time, his fucking hands and arms look like waterlogged mittens. Yeah, they look like he spent too much time in a swamp under a log. Some fingers are stuck together. Some mm-hmm. fingers ain't. It's a whole thing. He fucking throws up on the donut and doesn't have the wherewithal to be like, ah, she probably didn't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, until like, she's horrified. Yeah, he could he could have he could have ate after she left. That's kind of yeah. it's kind of rude to eat in front of company anyway. Although you you would like I'm sure you noticed the whole time that he's still like relatively human. He's just fucking sucking back chocolate bars like it's oh, Willy Wonka in the chocolate goddamn yeah. factory. Yeah, he, he, he gets those sugar cravings. All about the chocolate and bars. And is that not a meth thing? A sugar craving? It's more so a heroin thing. Okay, okay. I, I don't know if it's blood sugar related or not. But I just I, know they always got like a bag of candy. So I remember uh, Jason Mewes of Jay and Silent Bob fame. Yeah. Oh. Clerk, Small Rats, etc. Um, he I had a very big heroin problem for a while. And so what he would do is he would get these giant jawbreakers. You know the ones that are like rainbow inside? Oh, yeah. And he would just suck on those all day. But because he's on heroin, obviously he falls asleep a lot. Oh, no. So now he didn't choke on it, which is impossible to fathom. Like, how wouldn't you? Uh, What instead would happen is he would drool out rainbow color from his mouth onto the couch he was sitting on and dye the couch like a fucking 70s hippie (laughs) t-shirt. That's Uh, almost worse. uh, Yeah. 
I don't know if I would love or hate that decor. Oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> at this, this 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 hooker that he kidnapped. At this point, has she not reported? Any of this activity? The weirdness that she experienced? Yeah. Like, hey, this guy uh, busted a dude's arm and tried to put me in a little room. Yeah. This is where he lives. <laughs> he let me go and I have his address and I've seen his face. Uh, given the uh, physical appearance of that um, prostitute, mm. I, I can't imagine that that would be the m- most upsetting call she got that night. Fair. That Fair. was probably like, a, oh, that was rough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You know what? It was an industrial neighborhood, yeah. rough part of town. Probably <laughs> that didn't probably deter not the, her either. Probably not the first warehouse party she was at today. I was surprised she wasn't carrying mace to hit him when he was trying to force her into a pod. Yeah, for real. Fuck's sake. Um, um, oh, I also noted he looks like rotting Popeye. <laughs> rotting Popeye. That's fucking funny. Uh, his the thing that he wants to do the most right now in the in this movie is make a kids book. Yeah. about his experience about what it's like to be a fly person yeah great kids book be sure to film it for them <laughs> yeah those illustrations better be detailed i i bet you it's the kind of book that comes with a tape you can stick in the vcr and watch and traumatize your child into a heart attack immediately it's, it's the kind of book that is just german fairy tales but it, it's the ones that haven't been cleaned up yeah it's yeah the originals from the fucking 600s when uh there was good reason to keep your kids inside out of fear because bears yeah it's just a lot of inside out kids and witches <laughs> Um, yeah, uh... Stranger Danger was, like, a really different problem, it like, was. a couple hundred years ago. Oh, wasn't yeah, it? yeah, uh, because if you were gone, that was that, and you, another one was made. Exactly, yeah, we just make, it's been a week, yeah, all right, get in there. <laughs> get into the machine, <laughs> which is just a pile of fucking hay where peasants yeah. do it. Yeah, and the horses are shitting nearby. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's the hay. Yeah. They, they got to shit near what they eat. And uh, you got to fuck on what they eat. Yeah. It's multi-purpose hay. You're not supposed to shit where you eat. That's a very popular adage. Well, you know what? We talked about that earlier. And uh, <laughs> I think we decided that more people need to be doing that. Yeah. I lost that conversation completely. <laughs> That's where I arrived. Um... um Oh, I had a, I had a, I had a point mm. and the point has been dulled. Uh, kids I book? For, yes. So the other thing he wanted to do was become a, a fucking insect politician. Yeah. I'll be the first insect politician because insects are so emotionless and callous that we'll make great politicians. Good luck with the votes. <laughs> you know what? A dude ran for the president and he wore a boot on his head that one time. Remember him? Vermin Supreme is his name. And he, he That's his fucking name. He didn't get it. Not only did he run, he ran party affiliated as a libertarian. Nice. Which I if if libertarianism as like a governmental body, that being libertarianism is there should be no government. But also it wasn't it everybody gets a pony? And every, I'm sure that was in there. I I feel like he said everybody gets a pony. Yeah, his version of it. <laughs> Uh, I, if I, I, cause I believe he's in the U S if I had lived in his state, he would be my state Senator. Mm. I don't give a shit. Oh Berman, yeah. You wear a boot, a fucking galosh on your head. One singular. It was galosh too. It wasn't boot. And like the, he looked like a homeless man. That's who I want running the country. Uh, and like, we're just, we're, we're talking about this to avoid the, yeah. the real the real politics of this movie. Well, we're get, we want to get into hot, the heavy, heavy politics. Hot button issues coming up uh-huh. that we are avoiding like lava. Mm-hmm. So, Veronica uh, sees this monster that um, Seth has created from himself and an insect. And despite his excitement, is not herself excited by it. No, and, uh, and I, I mean, I get it. I do get mm-hmm. it. Now I believe this is where um, she and this is this is where it gets dumb for me. Mm. Why are you going to the guy who's only interested in putting his penis inside of you? Yeah, for help and advice. Because his first advice is just don't. Yeah, just no, no. His first is like tape it. <laughs> let me let me see that, that shit. Is, yeah, I want to I want to watch it myself. And like and then like he's watching the inner place. Like fuck, don't bring him back to your place. Yeah, that at that point, like if you're bringing him back, you could have delivered that tape. Yeah, you could have just slipped it under the door like he did with a fucking article. Mm, mm, and yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, we get the. Do I? Does that mean I can claim your body after all this is over? 
fuck. But as I believe he's watching this tape, she comes in quite upset. Oh, she does. She does. And why is that? Well, it's because with any sex comes pregnancy. Mm Mm-hmm. Abstinence is the only true form of contraception. She is with child. Yeah. Um, she has conceived mm-hmm. uh, and a baby. She's a little concerned. Yes, well, uh, as she should be, because did they bang before the fly thing mm-hmm. or after the fly thing? Uh, during. Well, I mean, yeah, but it, is that the nut from before the fly thing or after the fly thing? That's a great question. Because before the fly thing, baby's probably fine. Probably uh, great genes. Yeah. Uh, after the fly thing, well, she has a nightmare and it's horrible. It's actually one of the more effective uh, dream sequences that I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. And that I, it's been so long that I saw it, since I saw it rather, that I thought that that's what was happening in the movie. Yeah, so did I, honestly. Um, well, because she like she's talking to this guy who cares very little about yeah, her and just wants uh, to bang. Kill it. And, and, it's it, basically his advice. Yeah, and it, it seems like they waste zero time getting to the abortion clinic in this yeah. dream. So I was like, of course. Of course he wasted zero time. Mm-hmm. But it, and it ends up, yeah, a dream sequence. And then I'm like, oh, well, was the pregnancy the dream? Was When did the dream start? Yeah. Because that's how they get you. So uh, we learn later on that the pregnancy is real, but the oh, dream boy. was not. However, in this dream sequence. Oh, boy. Um, now, this is a thing that in this movie about a man who becomes a fly slowly and grotesquely, uh, having a woman uh, second guessing her abortion on the way to the room, in the room, and while it's happening, so much so that she is screaming no, and they're just they're just still going with it. Mm. Uh, that button is very hot. Oh, is it ever? Jeez Louise. And ever like every guy in the room is like, it'll be fine. <laughs> Don't let your feelings as a woman get in the way of what yeah. needs to happen. Oh my god. And so that's gross. Mm-hmm. But then even grosser, a giant larva comes right out of there. And they dangle it in front of her as she screams. As if you need to see it. Yeah, and, and it's like and it's wriggling. And it's big like it's a football if it were just a baby it would be a very large baby <laughs> but it ain't just a baby no <laughs> and, like, oh, it ain't just a baby as as a as a, a delivery doctor or an abortion doctor if i were uh conducting that procedure and that's what i came out with in my hands i would go don't look <laughs> you don't need to see this ma'am you know what it's fine we got it. No worries. I, Karumba, I can see your apprehension. Because I, the, tact, the most tactless way of doing that is be like, look at how fucked up this is. Yeah. Look at what came out of you. You're, this is sins. You're busted wide open now, given the girth of this thing. Yeah, holy moly. She. It's like, honestly, it's like he holds up like a jam-packed, like $5 <laughs> foot long. <laughs> Not even, because a foot long's half. Yeah. Oh, it's worse. It's the whole submarine sandwich from yeah, Subway. It sure is, dude. And it's moving. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and so thank God that was just a goddamn dream sequence. Yeah, man. It still gets weird with the whole baby. Yes, it but, does. But uh, more in an emotional way. And this is something that I... I, I didn't... I couldn't remember how fucking, like, really, like... The heart stringy and emotional this movie was near the end. It gets rather wholesome in a way. It does a little bit. Uh, it doesn't overshadow the grossness. But I was like, oh, there's feelings here, though. There's a few. Mm-hmm. There's a few. So that's sort of where it begins with this uh, this Veronica's struggle about whether or not she's going to have this kid. Uh, goes to fucking Seth. Can't tell him because he's horrifying. Yeah, he uh, is a monster. And just fine. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want to fucking t- talk to him for any longer than I had to either, mm-hmm. because at this point, his eyes are going in different directions. Yeah. Th- a lot of things are happening with his head where he starts to look like the toxic Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely I got that feeling, too. And like, <clears throat> I don't know how communications work and because his lips are basically just uh, they they're fucking Carmen Electra's lips now. <laughs> They're Pamela Anderson's lips or Kim Kardashian's lips. Well, Kim, I think she's got big ones. Exactly. Oh, oh I, they're super puffy. Are they? Uh, 
All right, yeah, you're right. I think I was, I'm picturing gums. Yeah, that, that happens later. Yeah. Oh, there are, yeah, because once his teeth fall out, obviously there's nothing but gum going on in there. Yeah, I was, I'm picturing to those. to overcome that problem pretty fucking quickly, though. <clears throat> yeah. So that happens. And then uh, she leaves. She leaves, and Stathis is down there waiting to see what happens, or what happened, rather. Mm-hmm. And she confesses that she, uh, loudly confesses yeah. that, uh, she couldn't tell him. And then like a gargoyle, he's just on the roof listening. Yeah, yeah. She's like, hey. Nah, nah, I couldn't. But take me to that abortion doctor now. Yeah. I'd like to get the baby out. That would be in the In the dead of night. <laughs> yeah. What journalist who owns a company just knows an abortion doctor is willing to come in at 1 a.m.? Um, I also was wondering as well, like, he just has a guy on call. Yeah. Like, Jeff's got his monkey man. This guy's got to get it out of there, guy. And Yeah. And he was like, I don't know, it's pretty late. Yeah. And <laughs> Let me see if he's up. Yeah. The, the nice thing being, all, it took some convincing from Veronica to just be like, yeah, I want this thing the fuck out of me now. And, the, and in a strange turn of events, the doctor's like, are you sure? <laughs> you know what? Come with me for a minute. Let me show you something. Yeah. Look at, he put it in me. Look at what put it in me. And I'd like, absolutely, let's go. Let's, I, I'm sorry uh, I was apprehensive about yeah, this. I, I shouldn't have asked any questions. This clearly isn't my choice. <laughs> what are we doing here? Uh, and yeah, so she's sitting in the room. Mm-hmm. This, this abortion room yeah. that has a window. It does. So far, you can look out. A huge window. And go, huh. Is how visible is my puss currently? Not even that, just should, like, this, what's happening shouldn't be visible. Yeah, nah, and it's not, it, ever. Like, sure, it's like frosted glass or whatever, mm-hmm. it's those, but... It doesn't help. It, again, with, like, the, 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 the 13 ghosts, you get close enough, you can see what's going on in there. you see, like, any, I'm unmistakably gonna recognize a woman in stirrups. It's got, it's, it's, it's got a, it's got a shape. It there, there's a shape to it. It, it looks like uh, just the letter I and V <laughs> on top of each other. It sure does. It sure does. And you know the alphabet better than anybody. I, def- I know it well. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Uh, um, so yeah, she's just like kind of looking out this window being like abortions, abortions. Mm. And then here comes Jeff Goldblum to fucking get in the way of human rights. Like fucking Batman. Fucking in through the window. Yeah. And he just snatches her up. Well, it's very obvious that he doesn't give a shit that much about humanity. Yeah. He doesn't get out much. He's willing to try and shove people into pods at, at his leisure. Given the uh, the deleted scene you described to me. Yeah. The given scenes, which shouldn't have been cut out. Now, let me... Yeah, why don't you go ahead and just... So, give people an example of the kind of person this fly transformation has turned Jeff into. <clears throat> uh, neither of us this time around had a chance to look at the trivia. Which is, you know, um, we, we like to do from time to time because shoehorning on, fun facts in yeah, is fun. On the old IMDb page there. We'll get some fun facts for you. However, I um, I took a cursory glance and I'll tell you right now, I shouldn't have. Uh, right here, uh, I believe it's either the second or third entry into the old trivia list. Uh, hang on, I have to find it again. Uh, that was one that was scripted but never filmed about. Uh, yeah, the same thing. Uh, so the, <laughs> part of it is the way that it's described is so fucking, they just fucking jump right into it. The infamous cat monkey scene where Brundlefly fuses a cat and the remaining baboon, the one that's not a meat puppet, mm. and then beats it to death with a lead pipe. <laughs> was, As you do. Was cut following a Toronto screening. And I mean, I... Why? Why? I mean, sure. It's keep it in the movie. Yeah, people don't need to feel good about Jeff Goldblum becoming a monster. He's a monster. Apparently, the audience at the Toronto screening uh, felt it difficult to identify with the emotions that the character was having after uh, they watched him commit animal abuse to death. Yeah. Now, like I, I don't really, I don't like seeing cats. Mm. I don't. I don't really like seeing dogs get hurt. Sure, but you put it together with a monkey. That's not a cat anymore. That's no, a, dude, it's Frankenstein's army. Just beat it. Just yeah, beat it. Hit it with the pipe. I mean, I can't remember I the rest of the lyrics to beat it. But I, those are it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to be defeated. I think. There you go. There you go. So get that lead pipe. Yeah. Get that so monkey cat. Get that lead pipe. Get that monkey cat. 
<laughs> and then you do the moonwalk on top of its corpse. Yeah, and then you beat it. Now, I would, I, I'm saying leave it in the movie because I wanted to see that fusion. I did. I did want to see, like, that would have added. Are we talking half cat head, half monkey head, both heads? Where do you where do you splice? Yeah, I you know? I I wanted more Brundlefly. I'm not like he, yeah. Once he starts becoming a monster man, there you don't really see what he's up to. Yeah, monster man is good. Uh, at the end of the movie, the full transformation into a a giant fly, best part of the movie for me. Oh, beautiful! Easily best grossest part. Uh, actually, the finger thing is the grossest part. I'm not gonna lie about that. Uh, there was also a scene where uh, where he's like eating from a dumpster. And he gets interrupted by a bag lady, yeah. who he then melts with spit. With his yeah, his vomit spit. I want that's I want to see that. I want to see yeah. those disgusting practical effects. Mm-hmm. That's yep. Show me that stop motion play doh, Mister Cronenberg. Let's go. So yeah, um, as you said, he gets right in the way of human rights and absconds with with poor Veronica, mm. and then he does another like uh, fucking the King Kong shit. Where he just puts her in the rafters. Yeah. And fucks around more. Yeah, he does. Uh, Stathis shows up with a gun. Oh my god, this fucking gun. This... The worst gun to bring to anything. Yeah. It's a over-under break-action shotgun. <laughs> you, you A, first of all, brings it into the room disassembled. Yep. Like an idiot. Put, puts it together right there. You saw what just took the woman. Yeah, so I'm going to go where he is, and hopefully he doesn't say he put this together real quick. I'm just saying put the gun together before you had to come in. Yeah, exactly. Second of all, it, it's 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 a it's a break action over under shotgun. Yep. You get two shots. Exactly. Very cocky. You better be good with that first one, because <laughs> the second one is a double tap. You, yeah, you're not going to get the second tap out. If you miss the first. Yeah. Not to mention, this guy climbs on walls and jumps across buildings like the tick. Yeah, he busted through the those like huge thick glass square yeah. things like ain't nothing. Like it's no problem at all. I would I would bring something with a few more bullets in it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I would bring maybe something a little more automatic. Especially uh, given the old uh, method by which this happens. So before this shit goes down... Uh, the whole plan is is explained yeah. to uh, to poor Veronica here. Unfortunately, hey, I heard about the baby. Um, I don't want you to have the abortion. Instead of um, having a very uh, thoughtful and um, uh, two sided dialogue mm, about mm. whether or not to bring this child to term, uh, despite the fact that we believe there is a possibility of deformity. Yes, I'm just gonna put you together with me. Yeah, you know what? Ultimate family. One one big thing. That worked so well the first time. Baby, mommy, and me all together in the same body so that I don't have to look like this. <laughs> I don't know how what that's going to look like is going to be any better. No. As a matter of fact, given that uh, a fly did this to me, yeah, it's well, probably going to be much worse. So let's let's see two humans and an uh, undeveloped fetus. Let's yeah. let's put that into the blender, and then we can stare each other in the face until we die twenty seconds later. D- yeah, essentially, yeah. Um. So yeah, that that's his big fucking plan. So I assume that like he was like, well, I got to test this out, and he threw mm-hmm. the monkey and the cat in there to see what would happen. Yeah, and that that's where that scene was. So even if that was like, even if that was the case, right? Mm-hmm. If that's where that scene was. And like you still go through with that idea, yeah. You're, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I saw what it did to the monkey and the cat. We'll be fine though. I'm I'm getting major um, major Simpsons vibes again. Trios of horror, the one where Bart's got an evil twin. Yeah, and he's like, look, uh, I, I sewed all these animals together. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna do us. Uh, it's like a rat bird. Yeah, it is. And and the it fucking. Uh, the the bird part flies away, hits a closed window, lands, and then the rat scurries off. I, I think it goes to get into a hole in the wall, and the yeah it yeah bump, yeah, bumps yeah. The bird. That's exactly what happens. Oh my god! So uh, that's what you have to expect if you try to splice three people into one. Yeah, exactly. That would come out a messy blob of shit. There's no other way to describe that. For real, that that that, like, he's, he's got to have fly brain because yeah, it must be fly brain. I'm not a genius. But I'm thinking about it, and that seems like something you're going to have to put down. Yeah. With a, with a gun. Yeah, and you better have a third shot, because there's, <laughs> yeah, now, now there's a baby, a mommy, mm-hmm. and a daddy. Mm-hmm. You want to hit each head. 
very um fucking uh, uh, color out of space yeah, yeah there you go um so yeah he's got this over under shotgun and he's just walking around uh very carefully walking in a silent room which i mean if all you have is two shots and they're with a shotgun make noise yeah you might as well bring the things to me that i so i can see them with this gun yeah and i think it's at this point jeff goldfly he's got the teleporters all fired up <laughs> And he's he's thrown Veronica like yeah. like she's a bag of trash. Just and, chucks her in it with no remorse. Like again, when did becoming a fly man give you the strength of a thousand flies and men? Yeah, he does explain like the brain part of it a little bit. He's talking about like impulsivity and how uh, insects only only care about themselves and they don't have compassion and all this shit. Yeah, uh, get inside my body. Mm. Then. Mm. I like, imagine that's the noise. Yeah, The yeah. whole thing's just going to be making... Um, I'll, I'll filter feed the compassion like a fucking whale shark. Ugh. Ugh. Um, so, yeah, he's got her in there. Um, and then uh, fucking the boss comes out with this shotgun, and Jeff Goldblum makes this monster screech as he dives yeah. onto him. <clears throat> like a banshee in the night. And he then he does the most horrible thing. <laughs> Horrible, the, the worst thing imaginable you could do to somebody, being yeah, like, a fly person. On a lot of levels, and like really just a dick move. Yeah. So he fucking vomit melts his hand, and then holds it up in his face like, look at this, you piece of shit. Mm. This is what I did to you now. <laughs> yeah, he does. Watch it melt with yeah, me. Yeah, he does. And, and like intense eye contact the whole time. And then he gets he gets his ankle for no reason. Yeah, he's just just for good measure just on that. Just throwing up like yeah. you go, blah, on your leg too, bitch. Mm-hmm. This is my house. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he does that horrible thing, and you watch his hand melt yeah. away. And then he pat like staff is passes out, which I don't know what else you would do in that situation. I agree with that. Yeah, he'd pass oh, right out on that. Good lord. Um, and the, so yeah, he throws her in. <clears throat> And then Stathis wakes up and gets one shot off. Mm-hmm. And he shoots the right cable. Uh, he just happens to shoot the right cable. Yep. Uh, there were a bunch of other options. Yep. Um, don't shoot the cable that connects the two telepods. Shoot wherever they're getting electricity from, number one. There you go. Uh, shoot the glass out of the pod so that Gina can fucking leave the place. Hey, that's another good option. Uh, instead of rolling the dice on a dozen black wires that all look the exact same. Hey, well, you know what? He came out on top. Yeah, well, it fucking worked out well fucking for him. Fucking dealer's yeah. bust, everybody mm-hmm. wins. Now, this is all you see of full Brundle fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets in the fucking third pod that he has ready for this uh, three-way splice and <clears throat> uh, comes out half pod because of the malfunction. Oh, wait, we forgot about the trans the transformation. Yeah. Before that. So that's the best part of this movie is when you see... Uh, you remember in Nightmare on Elm Street, I think it's either two or three, where uh, the guy is being possessed by Freddy slowly, and there's a part where he's like up against the wall, and Freddy comes out of his chest, and he just sheds a whole man mm-hmm. like it's nothing, and he's Freddy now. Yeah. That's exactly what happens, except what comes out is a fly. It's awful. It's so good, though. You you watch Jeff Goldblum's face split apart, yeah. and then just a big old fly head pop through. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, it's like Porky Pig at the end of fucking Looney Tunes. Fucking arm flesh comes off. Uh, the feet split open. Yeah, they do. And there's better feet underneath. Ugh. If you, you know, if you consider those better, I, I mean, do. What, what, yeah, well, what he had wasn't much, much to work with, no. so... And the biggest, blackest eyes that blink the most in the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's when he gets his blinking in. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. He gets, like, half out of this teleporter, and then it, it teleports. Yeah. And he just flops like a wet, dead fish onto the ground. Yeah. Half, half metal and tubing. Oh, my God. There was a good, there's a good, like, maybe a minute where you're yeah. like, oh, he's gone. That's it. Yeah. And then the machine fires up, and he comes in, and he teleports back. <laughs> In the most spectacular, yeah. So fucking Veronica's worried about Stathis, trying to get Stathis standing on the one foot he has left. Yeah. And then fucking here comes Pod Brundlefly crawling along the ground, essentially with his eyes screaming, kill me. Yeah. Oh, she like has the shotgun and he grabs it and puts it to his own fucking temple. The most baller move ever. Yeah. And then, and then she's like, no, no, I can't. Takes a step back and bullseyes him. (laughs) I don't even think she thinks twice. She's just like, no, no, no. Murder, ah, okay, maybe. And 
just bullseyes him with precision. Yeah. Blows his head into several pieces. Oh my god. It's... Wonderfully. And then the best part, the fucking movie just ends. Does it ever. That's it. Hard credits. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think there's a fly too. Mm. I think there is. Okay. Jeff Goldblum obviously is no in way it, he's in it, yeah. But I think there is a number two. I I do believe I have seen it in a poster or something. I think it's got something to do with the, with the. I just slapped my gut like I had a pregnant belly. Oh, um, oh, the baby. Yeah, the baby. Oh, sick. The baby. I hope that baby's half fucking fly just forever. Yeah, I hope his jaw falls right off. <laughs> that is something that happened. Yeah. Yeah, that jaw came right off, didn't it? And it's just fucking insect tongue underneath. Yeah. Proboscis. Beautiful. Um, Thank you, Cronenberg. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the fly. Yeah, that's my that was my notebook hurtling to the ground. I think uh, Matt had nine and a half pages, eight and a half. Some, oh my god! Yeah, I had, I just kept writing, and the Beat movie me by just a hard kept, four on that. It just kept happening. I write big. I yeah. write like a, I write like a seven year old. So <laughs> sometimes I don't follow lines. Uh, what I did write down, um, yeah, fucking, um, there. This movie is a remake. Is it? From a movie that was uh, uh, done in 1958. So safe to say this is the better version. Oh, obviously. In one of the Interesting. rare occasions where a remake is better than the original. I, I, knew it, I knew it was a remake, but I figured that it was remade and it was so shitty <sighs> that it just... This is this is the fly. Yeah, this is the one. This well, is the fly I, you, you know about. As far as I'm concerned, it is. Yeah, I I really don't think we need to watch that one from the 50s. No. But if the well runs dry, yeah, we got the fly. And I think it's got the the uh, woman from the beginning of Psycho in it. So there's that. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, that's the fly. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't need to watch it, but we just stretched it out for two hours, o almost an hour longer than the actual movie. <laughs> so. Uh, Fine. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Happy to talk about the fly for that long. What did okay? What did you? What, what, what's your rating? My rating on this movie is a good eight, only because I wanted more Brundle fly. Okay. I wanted more full fly. You know what? I gave it an eight as well because I really enjoyed the practical effects. Yes. But then I apparently there's this fly footage of just this guy running around the streets melting old ladies. Mm -hmm. Bumped it down to a seven and a half. Okay. I would have liked to have seen you, that. That point five is because you want to see this bag lady get melted. I would have liked to have seen, because it does at some point become more about her and her boss than Brundlefly. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of him. Yeah. There's and uh, it, it doesn't, they wrote some somewhat unnecessarily uh, Stathis as like just the biggest fucking piece of shit on the planet. Yeah, they did. And then they gave... Like Gina Davis, like a ton of just exposure to him. Ah, gee, he sucks. All he wants to do is fuck me all the time. He's yelling about other people's dicks in stores when I'm trying to buy clothes. <laughs> I'm gonna, just, I'm, we're, we're gonna hang out still. Though. Yeah, I mean, you know? I, I, he was funny. Uh, all I'm saying to Gina Davis in this movie is have more than one friend. Yeah, and don't have that friend be your boss. Also, don't go to your ex for advice. How's yeah. that? Oh, just good advice for across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it's your ex, get your key back. Mm -hmm. If he if it's that kind of ex, a hundred percent. If it's that kind of ex, throw a toaster in the shower next time. Yeah, burn here, an effigy here, uh, on his front lawn, something like that. <laughs> so eight and seven point five for this. Eight and seven point five. You know, after the fucking three and four from the Human Centipede, I'm glad we watched an actual fucking movie for once. You know, uh, it was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, I went into it being like it's gonna be one of those movies from the '80s where you're yeah. like, ugh, but. No, there was a lot. Now nah, I well uh, shot. Uh, the the soundtrack was like appropriate. Yeah, it was sick. It was very eighties, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, not too much like techno shit. Also, it was, like, yeah. decent. And then okay. you got Jeff Goldblum, which I think do. we need more Jeff Goldblum. We need, I would say yeah, we need more. I it's wish just tough. He's not in too many horror movies. Yeah, I wish Jurassic Park was a little more scary. Mm -hmm. But it ain't. For I did for anybody over the age of seven. <laughs> yeah. So it's my turn to choose a movie here. Okay, okay. Uh, thematically, I went with, uh, um, first of all, we got a relationship with somebody who turns into a monster. Oh, shit. Um, unsanitary lab conditions. Oh, shit. Uh, assimilation of human DNA, so like um, uh, human-monster hybrids. Oh, shit. And unhinged uh, scientists. And then also, just for good measure, I put in insects. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, three movies here for you to choose from. Okay. 
One is a straight uh, human monster hybrid. Okay. Um, animals uh, kill people and then uh, use them. Okay. I'm trying to keep it super vague. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, we have one that is a little bit more sci-fi, again, uh, about science turning a person into a monster. Okay. And that's okay. more in the um, uh, uh, killer genre. And then we have one about insects that become uh, part of a human. Okay. I think I know two of these ones. You may. I think I think I know two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with the first option because I think I know the second two. Okay. So the first option you chose was uh, d- d- animals that uh, kill people and then use them. Yes. And that is Splinter. Splinter. And I don't think you'll have seen it. No. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. Okay. I All think right. you'll like it, though, because we're doing a practical effects thing right now. And it's it's very much that. Oh well, I'm I'm in. I practical effects. I'm always in. It almost it almost entirely takes place at a gas station. Slick. All right. The well, other two options uh, were a found footage movie called The Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not not what I thought, but that would have been a good one. Mm-hmm. And the other one was Jason X. And, oh! that, and that was your lottery win. Oh! I gave you one. No, we could have. Damn we it. We could have watched Jason X. This I, is the second time in a row that you've boned yourself. I thought it was going to be Hollow Man. Ah, I didn't even think about how I, just, oh, I consider that more of an action thriller, though. As soon as you said, like, science turning somebody like, into mm-hmm. a, a killer, I was like, Hollow Man? Jason X, Nano Table. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, oh, man. That's the, the probably one of the best Friday the 13th <laughs> because it's so it's damn silly. Fucking hilarious, dude. Ah, uh, that's got one of my favorite deaths in it too where the guy falls onto the huge corkscrew and just goes yeah. down the Or the, the nitrous oxide. I can't talk too much about it because yeah. we're going to fucking watch it eventually. Oh, uh, we are. I'll fucking shoehorn it in next yeah, time. Yeah, you will. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good podcast. Yeah, it was. Uh, do you have anything you want to end it with? Darkrosecult.com. Also, my penis. You'll probably hear those creaks right on the, those creaks and coughs right on the fucking, like you're an old man. The worst fucking sound imaginable. Trying to pull the the leaf out of your dinner table (coughs) because your grandchildren are coming over for Thanksgiving. Oh, it's always Thanksgiving. Why don't we just leave the leaf in? Yeah. Who cares about your table being a little bit wider? (coughs) So fucking, where even was I? (laughs) Oh. Oh. Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah. Okay. 